I grasped it between my fingers. One squeeze and it would be no more. Ludus non factum est. The squirrel's tail twitched in a salute between equals. Sol invictus! Saluna, our lady of silver. I realised my error. <laughs> I think I'm fermenting from the inside out. Inaccessus. True soul. Absolute. What did they mean? The dog wheezed. He was old and tired. But Master walked his circles, and so would he. That smell. Oh, what is it? The drow could no longer be compelled to speak. I saw nothing I could use. The mercenaries shifted impatiently. Odd. Something was off. These statues looked too benevolent to be depictions of Shah. Saluna, the moon maiden. He gave a tiny burble of disappointment, head falling towards the ground. Her fingers flexed against her thigh, coiled with tension, longing. It was time to go. I stepped on board. The beast reeked of brimstone and offal. Every breath was thick with blood. Look at that. She doesn't have to be trustworthy to be useful. He lowed with surprise and delight, clearly unused to this attention from strangers. Is there a dead tadpole in that jar? He paused, looked down at my eye as it sank into the mud, and recoiled slightly. Leviatar, a goddess who thrives on pain. This book must be for her followers. I returned the growl and commanded her to lie back down, now. Precis, alia, fero. Then the sovereign droned a new melody, cautious but insistent. The bear let out a roar of hurt and hatred. He wasn't done fighting, whether I was on his side or not. Horribilissimus. As I neared the rubble, a fragmented voice clutched at my mind. There's no getting past those vines. The ritual was thorough. With that, she fluttered into the air setting off at a determined pace. It's fine. We did the right thing, so let's keep moving. We should check it out, but be careful. I saw a vision. My lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign was threatening me. The dog looked from me to the dead man. He stared for a long moment. Timask and torch stalks. Great. At least we're safe now. That's all that matters. Cupio virtus lichet. She flexed her great shoulders and lunged. As I drew closer, the owlbear lashed out. Talons sliced through the air towards me. I'm still wondering about the dead drow. Looks like we're in Eltergard, east of the city of Baldur's Gate. It was the source of the voice. She would obey it. She would obey me. He listened, rapt, hanging on every word. Then we'll stay out of this cultist trouble and worry about our own. I took a swing at him. That odd staff might be of interest to Gale. <coughs> non fit injura. Because I knew that damned tadpole was crawling around in my skull. By the exile. What was that? But I wasn't her master. The fog lifted and a low growl bubbled from the back of her throat. A flimsy raft wobbled on the lake's murky waters. Reality hit. I'd been outsmarted by an ogre. First came ice. Shivers from top to toe as I explored her. Spira mortis! My chest filled with yearning. I wanted to get closer to... No, this was all wrong. Fungal roots wove through my mind, poking me, warning me. The crab writhed in horror as I ripped its shell away. Its raw, twisted abdomen squirmed. Ve victis! His eyes flicked to mine for an instant, then away, as if it hurt to look at me. But if it's a symptom of the tadpole... Irritation eclipsed his suspicions, and Ragslin's mind rested. The tadpole squirmed in my mind. It seemed sated. Incertus pulcher imperio. The bear was exhausted, but relieved. She greeted me with a contented rumble. It prodded the other items in my bag, as if considering their potential as new homes. I felt a touch of the hag's magic. But whatever this door once held was gone. Nulla salus. I palmed the ring and tried a reverse Hamar's flourish to make the ring vanish. I repelled her mental probes, concealing my memories. Burned from the inside out. Must have been our warlock friend. Looks ready to break at a touch. Confusion, alarm, and then the presence withdrew, leaving a dull black mirror once more. As my lips touched the filthy flesh, I caught a whiff of lavender. She saw the entrance to the grove as the adventurers retreated inside joining the tieflings. I felt the rat twitching on the edge of panic. Something waited in the great hollow below. Barrel stalk, bloated with poison. Better leave it be. Yuck. <laughs> Adventus! By Eldath, the quiet one, all turmoil is calmed. He grasped my mind and pried it open. 
Rage flooded my senses. Resisto acidum! Crescit iundo! With dull insistence, it tried to scuttle away. I was huge. A predator. Quiet. I see knolls ahead. That's curious. Doesn't do anything. Ad meorum de gloriam. What happened to Marina's husband was awful. But we had to free her from that debt. It remained firmly closed as the presence huddled within. So this is what honesty gets you. Consider my lesson learned. The stone was warm against my palm. I felt the Dark Lady's essence in every tattoo. Fronte nulla fides. I realised the crab needed water, fast. It would die without it. They paused, then chittered to each other, abdomens quivering in confusion. The spell had no effect. The corpse couldn't answer any more questions. A beautiful glaive. So why does touching it give me a knot in my stomach? Finally free. I must find my kin. The scholar's brow tensed. His voice spilled into my skull as the spores connected our minds. Resisto acidum. A gemstone glittering in the dark. <sighs> Brightness of deep thought and far-seeing. <sighs> Brightness to blind. I saw Draw Ragslin writhe. A tadpole clung to the Mind Flayer's fingers. The bear blinked at me in surprise. With a small huff, she settled back onto her haunches. The bear whimpered after me, confused, begging for help. Damn! The corpse shifted, but refused to speak. And I heard what you said. You pray to Shah, the goddess of darkness. My words fell on deaf ears as the two men stared each other down. I wager that blade has a mighty enchantment. Gail could tell me more. I saw a name etched into the leather. Scratch. The rat hissed as I locked eyes with it, an ugly grimace on its face. It feels like my magic is getting drained. The meat was trapped. Terrified, but protected by fire. When the fire died, so would the meat. Stultissime! I pictured the Feywild in its colourful glory, the joy of all seasons flourishing at once. Dark, empty pods flickered across my vision. They demanded new flesh. It was no masterpiece. Her gaze flicked between the box and me. She was lying. Either way, we're lucky to be in a cell, not a grave. Let's find a way out of here. Vita mortis cario. I had to kill, tear the Dwergar apart, laugh as their blood showered me and filled me with life. The tattoos were strange, but I couldn't identify anything else unusual about it. Vlaketh's crown, what was that? The crab landed next to a pouch of hamster feed. It immediately recoiled. After what mind flayers have done to us, we can't exactly brag. Hack can't have gone far. Anger smothered by confusion. It didn't understand but it sensed it could trust me. The corpse hissed, unwilling to speak. Freshly turned soil shifted beneath my feet as I approached the grave. Looks like an ambush, a clumsy one. Whatever made those tracks seems to be in here. Virtus et scientia. The corpse awaited my questions. No point in worrying about the future when I could change that future. I would change that future. Efferve. <sighs> Victoria's song consumed the grotto. A rhythmic chant pulsed just beneath. Someone else got out. Veni et juvame! The bird hopped impatiently. What are these for? The fright choir faded. A single melody rose above the others, brassy and commanding. Are those drow? Did those Dwergar do this? My chest filled with yearning. I wanted to get closer. I needed to get closer. Veritas! Credo! Oculos! The light over Saluna should be pure. Not red. It struggled to walk, chittering uneasily. Precis alia ferro. I felt Ragslin's suspicions. A true soul should never ask about the master. She tilted her head curiously. She didn't seem to know it. That's the symbol of the absolute. Marked in blood. Faccio voco fere. The glyphs screamed, searing my mind. I saw time rewritten, fate undone. The wolf focused on the quiet glow of the statues shutting out the commotion of the grove. Who knows what will happen in the chaos of a fight? We'll decide when the moment comes. Stupefacio! Fungal roots wove through my mind, seeking my true intent. The boar squealed in outrage and shuffled its trotters, ready to flee or charge. Resacchio! Voco flagella! Are they all like this? It's gone. I felt so strong. Where did that come from? A low growl built in his throat as his eyes tracked the movement of my tail. It was agitating him. Dissolve. I felt it too. The Underdark's magical energy, the Fairsress, slipped from my grasp. Not now. 
Come and see me when we make camp. Eyes on our targets. We'll take out the leaders and be gone fast. With a flick of his tail, he ran away, urging me to follow him. Then, visions. Dark dwarves, Dwergar, chopping fungal tendrils with their axes. Curculus mortis! True soul. Absolute. What were they raving on about? I saw a name etched into the leather. Scratch. I'm far beyond ogre ears. If that Salunite amulet is really god-touched, Gale would want to see it. She gave a great yawn and settled back down to sleep. At least we're in one piece. For now. Corporosana! Interplanar flora. They're brewing something. The servant said what it could. Absolutely nothing. I recognised the description. They were looking for Karlak. The goblin's corpse grunted and spasmed. Diore. Compassion. A dead tongue. Whoever worshipped here must be long gone. All I had to do was turn the tables, cage the creature before it caged me. It looked like quite a battle. And yet the monsters had returned. Bene curator. I dropped the book to the ground, ready to strike. That's sorted. Let's go talk to the priestess. Were they heading to the druid's grove? The beast's flanks wobbled as it cravenly skittered away. Either way, we're lucky to be in a cell, not a grave. Let's find a way out of here. Dementote! Veritas! Credo! Oculus! <laughs> Moon Maiden's teachings. But why hidden back here? And what's this symbol? He responded to my greeting with a sad snort and shake of the head. He wanted to leave this blood-soaked place. I'm afraid I must decline. I'm not in the habit of helping vermin. Hopefully it won't return to bite. Those boots look quite special. Something for you, perhaps, Gail? An ordinary lamp. Not a trace of magic on it. Aredissimus! I felt the barest touch of magic, wild and chaotic, beneath the smooth wooden surface of the door. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. She balked at the unfamiliarity of my grip, but my hold was strong and she didn't question. Intactilosum! Images of the battle at the gate shimmered into view along with the adventurers pleading to be let inside. The bird hesitated a second, then let out a tentative chirp. He hopped around happily. Ferio! There was no doubt. This was the creature responsible for my parasite. And I had questions. Ad lapidem! I don't think we'll see Astarian again. That hunter's no joke. Gods, that thing is massive. Frange! The vessel had seen better days, but was still afloat. A safe way forward, perhaps. Hmm. Suitable enough. Vlacketh dealt with Tiamat. We deal with this. Hmm. Ferio tormentum. The metal was coarse, riddled with imperfections and shaped without care. A dwarf child could have crafted better. Not getting back in that thing. Everyone has secrets, but I thought you'd trust me. Maybe I was wrong. Stretch. Is this to be our fate? What, what happened? These true souls are something else. With that kind of power... They could tear Faerun to pieces. Sounds like trouble. Every breath, every blink proved exhausting. A long day awaited me. No way to ignite these. Strange. Baldur's Gate. A port city, no? Famed along the entire Sword Coast. I saw the slaughter of the tieflings again, but through her eyes. The delight of blood, the symphony of screams. My lips set in a cruel smile. If we can wield those creatures' powers... What comes next? We transform? Omnia mutantor! The goblin's corpse grunted and spasmed. Confucio! I caught a starian trying to drink my blood last night. I drove him off, though. We won't see him again. A candy-sweet scent wafted forth. The Susa bark infused the weapon from within the flames. Just a trick, surely. We're being toyed with. <sighs> no, love. It's a port city, some way off. Ragslin's rage scorched my mind, hot and black. It squeezed me, suffocated me. Just as I was about to get a grip, the goblin jerked back his foot. He nodded, grateful of that at least. <gasps> Oof! I bet he broke that tiefling's nose. Friendly place. My gaze followed the drow footprints around the courtyard and south, out of the inn. I tried to break through, but its mind was impenetrable. With a last surge of defiance, it slapped my efforts away. Dead. By our own kin's hand. Freme! I find I don't much like being told what to do. Least of all by long-dead monks. Precis alia fero. The lock snapped open with a satisfying click. <sighs> 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 
there, in the cage. Propria. I tried to connect, to let him know he wasn't alone, but he twisted like a snake. Minimus! Strange times, strange bedfellows. Not a pleasant thought, but our reality nonetheless. Wait, true souls are infected like us? Why do they think they're talking to a god? Risus abundat! Cado! Flagilo! It felt ten times its size. Alive, awake, almost smug. Yes, not very noble of us, was it? I don't want to make a habit of grave robbing. Strange face, but same heart. Pumping blood and strength and fury. I saw him descending into the hatch, surrounded by safe, comfortable darkness. <laughs> If we're in agreement, then we should get moving. The goblins blinked at me in confusion. Chuck. A cheap trick. First came ice, shivers from top to toe as I explored her. We travel together. That makes it my business. It's bloated with poison. Better leave it be. It shivered, overwhelmed by alien sights, and revealed its own home. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Talons biting deep into the earth, every muscle trembling. I realised it wasn't afraid. As I leaned in, I noticed a squirm of movement under the dead man's features. Glacius! Several spiders rested in the rear of the crevice. Voco potentia! Spira mortis! The bear gave a long, inquiring sniff before settling back onto her haunches. <sighs> His fingers were warm against my cheek, softer than I expected. Ex textura! Some bloody help. He now belonged to the circle. He would obey the sovereign. I saw an image of blue skies and sunshine as the door shuddered a warning. Run. The corpse's head turned to look at me, its eyes blank. It awaited my questions. Invisibilis. His eyes settled on the stone door as he whined softly. I wonder where they were going. I don't want to know what that is. I moved quickly, but not quickly enough. I let my hand fall. Victory was mine. Her flesh melted away, revealing a hag with pockmarked skin. Es pride I may. The stone was warm to the touch. Energy radiated from the statue, calling to the surrounding shadows. Looks a bit worse for wear. Perhaps I can patch it up. I don't see one. Saluna's dogs would never put her sigil in the dark. From the far distance, I heard a blast of goblin voices. Necklace matches the sigil in that cave. The harpers were busy. Then came fire, as her fingers raced up and down my back, seeking more. Long ago, maybe. Omnia mutantor! Tail rigid with irritation, she scampered off. He flinched and scurried away. Typical. Hmm. Must be the tree from the note to Gorga. What's that cleft there? The mirror was magical. But what magic? To what purpose? I had no idea. It reminded the body of something. The memory of a cold tomb, with danger lurking in the shadows. Agitated clacking choked my thoughts. The spiders skittered about, more nervous than before. The goblins will be out for blood after what happened at the grove. The bear's heart sank. He turned away, his mind drifting to the memory of a particularly tasty fish. I was swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sang many voices. The harmony of a myconid collective. She chittered back energetically. I had no idea what any of it meant. Finding none, I said I couldn't explain his good health. Lazelle's eyes drifted downward. Something was off. Umberly was the power-hungry goddess of the sea and demanded constant sacrifice from her followers. Resisto! Pallidamors! The door stood silent. I stumbled. In one swift move, the armoured man's fist made contact with a sickening crunch. Oh, I don't feel too good. What did that druid scratch me with? Allying ourselves with dark forces? Really, you lot. I might weep with pride. The tadpoles shivered as I heard Will's voice within my skull. Excellent armour. Strange place to find it. Cum mortuos in lingua mortua. This place is a blister of corruption. The man nodded thoughtfully and added another dismembered limb to his sketch. I spotted explosives placed around the cavern. They were ready to bring the place down. Ignis! With a shock of psychic pain, the pack leader's mind clamped onto mine. It's a nice horn, but useless now. My parasite resisted, flailing as I crawled into Ragslin's mind murk. I tried to read her mind. Inficio! 
This alliance will dissolve when it needs to. No point getting worked up over it. Moon Maiden's Grace, it's open! So many dead. But no signs of a struggle. What happened here? They're not attacking. Must think I'm one of them. The growl deepened into one reserved for another predator, and she lunged. Poor creature. I hope it can follow my scent to camp. The book was locked tight with no keyhole. There was only an angular recess in the cover. I've got the plans and the Sousa bark. Now I need somewhere to craft it all. Funny thing, prophecy. All grand destiny, but no advice on how to actually achieve it. His fist gripped a weapon hilt. On his gnarled grey skin, I saw the Absolute's brand. I hear fighting. Trouble's not over yet. An unknown face commanded my mind. Rust-red skin, gnarled horns. And then I was myself once more. Ugh. Don't disturb a half-ogre in the making. Intactilis sum. I could see the broken helmet bore the mark of Shah, the Dark Lady. Gustas Dalkis, non compos mentis. I slipped my hand into his pocket, but came up empty. If he'd had any gold at all, someone else had run off with it. Barrel stalks, full of poison. The Myconids will release it if threatened. Mm. Wouldn't wish that fate on anyone. I'm not going to be eating mushrooms for a long while after this. Beasts chasing beasts, alongside a wild woman. The scene meant nothing to me. Bevero. Dead. Seems these true souls have their limits. Locked. Best find another way in. Such a rush to tell everyone our business. <laughs> I recalled Umberly was the wicked goddess of the sea, honoured more by fear than faith. The tiefling prayed to my patron, Kelimvor. Instantly I knew what was in his heart. That's true. There could have been another way that didn't cost us an eye. Dolor. There was nothing else to do here. I took my leave. The corpse jerked. It would speak no more. She was serious. Even she seemed surprised. She was attracted to me. So much for honesty. Our healer turned into a jailer pretty quickly once she heard about the tadpole. I suppose she's dead either way. We can debate more later. Fiat voluntas dei. Odd. I feel... better. Mother of lusts. What was that? Now that's... Dedication. I watched with cold realization. This was the end of one life, but the start of another. I had to kill, tear the gnomes apart, laugh as their blood showered me and filled me with life. As I turned to leave, so did the other child nearby. She looked nervous for some reason. Where the hells are we? Surprised this hay hasn't gone up in flames yet. What's a fort like this doing in the Underdark? The tadpole squirmed with glee. It was clearing the way for something deep inside. Something that wasn't me. Sword and a hat. Wonder whose? Quadico fucke! My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. Ugh! Hells, that's some first impression you've made. <laughs> By the exile, gone again. Magic eating flowers as a light source. Ingenious. Magic blasted through me. I shivered, as if dunked in ice-cold water. Her flesh melted away, revealing a hideous creature with pockmarked skin. Ubies. Facio voco fere. For the best. Death is too good for it. I saw the drow cursing at the fallen rocks, then carving through the deep gnomes in his rage. An almost childlike joy entered Emeluam's icor laced eyes. It didn't seem worth much, but she held it as if it was a great treasure. Fiat lux. <gasps> they spoke of the Absolute, same as that goblin, Saza. Curious. Vita mortis cario. Looks like someone wanted to bury their secrets. Ah. <sighs> Vincit qui petitur. Reeks of mugwort. Tastes terrible, but makes some useful potions. Hostia monera. Ah. <sighs> then I saw visions. Dwergar like myself, chopping myconid remains with their axes. Plue. Tisk va. Best to watch my step. The corpse fell silent. It could not answer any more questions. A calm night and the deep dark should have lulled me to sleep, yet my eyes wouldn't close. The arrangement of the moons can't be an accident. Fronte nulla fides. Mortum tum sum. Looks like a shrine to Saluna over there. The music wove together. With a sigh, the bard closed her eyes. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. Foul stench of slaughter turned suddenly sweet through the rat's nose. 
Didn't take you for a percussionist. The sky split open and nautiloids poured out of a void that consumed the stars. In Nocte Concilium. This was the child that had vanished right in front of me before. That drow cowl might have bits of magic lingering inside it. Any thoughts, Gail? What in the hell's get back? I'd rather chew the leather off a goblin's back than eat that again. <sighs> what did he expect would happen? The servant said what it could. Absolutely nothing. The rat squeaked, first at the goblin, then at me. Her eyes shone with menace. She wanted to eat, to kill. Clever. Food is dispensed for anyone wearing this collar. Let's hope the locals are friendly. I told him he was free. He should be on his way. The towers seized. The battle done. The moonrise broke the darkest one. We'll be careful around the camp. Let's get moving. These Salunite words do nothing. No point in debating what's already done. Let's go on ahead. Faccio voco fere! He arrests Moon Mistress Lorena, founder of Salunite settlements along the Chionthar. Ragslin's thoughts roiled then stilled. My words would be his. The corpse was silent. A decrepit raft trembled in the mellow waves. They didn't want to surrender their valuables. Even after death, the fear gave way to relief. The peace pool, a cure, even the beast did not bite there. But still, there was nowhere to run. It shivered in understanding. A vision of its own home flickered into my mind. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Take me with you! These are Sharon weapons. I would recognize the Night Singer's blades anywhere. Stabilio, voco potentia. Scuttle. Esto perpetua. I felt I'd been robbed. And by the look of my pack, not for the first time. Giant mushrooms. I've never seen anything like them. <gasps> Doesn't work. Minimus. Then outsiders killing the Dwergar and the stench of blood, blood, blood. I know we need to find a healer, but staying here is risky. Shadow druids at work. And this corger is their newest recruit. The bear was preoccupied with a shiny pebble. My presence went unnoticed. The squirrel chittered scornfully as my foot whistled over her head. Crescatskientia. Good thing we arrived when we did. It made all the difference. Venustior. Tuas nihil. Their confusion deepened. Why would they go outside when there was food right here? He licked blood and dirt from his paws, acknowledging my presence with a low growl. And yet another. Hardly the warmest of welcomes. What is this liquid? It gave a final, anxious snort, then bolted away. One by one, the spiders retreated to the rear of the crevice, lulled by my crooning. Anticipation. She was testing me somehow, about Raphael. Sensing my presence, the knoll's tadpole writhed in ecstasy, echoing my command. Damn these imps. I need to reach the transponder. Cozy fire. Obede me. Inaccessus. It seemed to curl upwards, as if considering me. Why are all the buildings on this plane so broken? What do they do with them? Flagello! Must have belonged to Lenore's dog. The splintered logs and sodden rope were hardly comforting. Never thought I'd walk in on a bugbear and an ogre. I was swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sang many voices. The harmony of a myconid collective. Saluna. Mother of Tides, long ride down. Is this the Underdark? The owl bear didn't attack, but I saw every sinew of its body tense with violent potential. Someone's in trouble. Sounds like coin to me. No, those valuables were gathering dust. If not us, someone else would have taken them. Saluna, Our Lady of Silver. <sighs> a pause, and then the flicker of a tongue across my neck. Evanesco! Her panic and restlessness coursed through me. She needed to get away. I shook my head and left. Mors animae, impero tibi, te absolvo. Bones snapped as the hyena was hollowed from the inside out, forming a vessel for something new. The tadpole squirmed with glee. It was clearing the way for something deep inside, something that wasn't me. A stone hit her temple, and a deep, rumbling snarl tore through the room. I tore at the webbing, but it was stronger than it looked. I could discern no information or intention in the sovereign song. Hmm, what's that? Punge! It's a wretched cesspool of vice and immorality. And it's rather fun. The corpse grew still. It would no longer respond to my questions. Why then poison goes well with wine? Or so I hear. Ale me! Here lies Canon. He gave his life defending others. 
He will be missed. This isn't really the time. Doubt clouded Ragslin's skull. Did he feel my guidance? Kudo! My mind was one with Wills. A blood-red creature consumed my vision. The same I had seen when we had first met. The bear bowed his head in gratitude before limping away. He had to get out. <gasps> Half this drow's body is crushed. Must have fallen from pretty high up. Its form flickered, and I realised that the door was transparent. The corpse mentioned a key. This must be the one. Best to stay clear. Or be ready for a fight. The corpse looked at me, and its mouth fell open. But it remained silent. It knew I was its killer. <sighs> Where's Minsk? And Boo? More of those wretched things. Makte vertute! I wonder why this one isn't working. Never resting. Never trusting. Tired feet and eyes always watching. The dog barked and insistently raked the ground with his paw. Scratched at it. The bird hopped around the nest excitedly, grateful that it was still intact. I hear shouting up ahead, strangling me. <laughs> Dead. By her own kin's hand. I told her I was her master. I'd just washed my scent away in the peace pool. Mortalis! Shrieking in indignant terror, the squirrel fled. Those dreams and our tadpoles are tied together. Should we really keep using this power? Maya, fortior! The dog nuzzled my hand and urged me on. His tail threatened to wag. I said we must lower the trap and kill the creature before it harmed someone. Looks like a beast came through here. A big one, too. The bear lazily opened her eyes and nodded in gratitude. Blood smell. Life smell. Not like the great hollow below, which smelled only of death. Something's wrong. They should be trying to get away from that thing if they'd sense. The telescope pointed to the right. I tested the weight of the chains, looking for weak points. Magis amica veritas. The bear rose to his hind legs and roared, realizing he was not alone. Arguing about it won't solve anything. Let's go. Broken, but nothing I can't fix. I detected a distinct quiver in every note. These creatures had experienced recent tragedy. I recognized telltale flecks of werejackal blood. This was a potion of sleep. That's Jurgle, scribe of the dead. I didn't think anyone still worshipped him. He whined once more, lonely and afraid. These are the goblins we need to kill. This could take all day. The prisoner screamed and thrashed against his bonds. Virtus et scientia. The ox's hooves stamped the ground, longing to trample any goblin in sight. My lips moved, speaking a language I didn't understand, and something was trying to reply. It replied with an echoing screech and a vision of a limp youngling. Vos chioro. I asked the kid if he was ready to take a beating over a piece of jewellery. I said I wasn't kidding. Pay up. Ad vitam aeternum. He's gone. There's no point in fighting over it. Terror. Fire and fear and feathers burning. Her heart slammed against her ribcage. Rizum teniatis. Incende. Scio didice pecto. Yes. If we hadn't taken those valuables, someone else would have. The colourful man yelped in delight and started scribbling. With a shaggy grin, the bear sneaked a look at the page. Scorched ground. Better watch out. I live by two rules. Always empty your flask and never trust goblins. I asked what was inside it. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Distrust, hostility, because I looked like a gif. I said I'd been careless. It wouldn't happen again. Video veritatum. All I could see were those symbols. All I could hear were the whispers. There was nothing else. No hand had worked this stone. Each symbol pulsed with magical energy, holding a rhythm like a heartbeat. His eyes rolled back as he slumped forward. What else were we supposed to do? Abandon her to that terrible deal? Agony burst behind my eyes and the whole world went dark. Try as I might to breach his inner thoughts, Gale swatted my efforts away with infuriating ease. Seems the future's looking better than we thought. Closer. I need to get closer. A deathly cold aura settled around the grave, seeping into the soil. Ira et dolor! Does that mean the whole cult's after us? That's not good. The man's smile bent downward as he turned, and his thoughts became mine. If my breath couldn't kill people already, 
It certainly can now. The dog looked at some paw marks in the dirt around the corpse. Sounds like we have a lot more tadpoles to deal with than we thought. The door remained intact, despite my efforts. I dug through the rock pile, but found no trace of the boy. The prisoner smiled through the pain, then spat in my direction. They chittered in amusement, then unleashed a torrent of high-pitched insults at the bard. As they departed, the corpse remained still. It could answer no more questions. Chittering, he opened his mouth. One of his teeth was badly chipped. Bresacchio! The bear whimpered in pain. He let out a desperate growl, his confused eyes still begging me for help. Te ad stringo linguam! A dragon. It was circling like a bird of prey. Hunting. Unlikely you'd be successful. But it cost me nothing to spare your sorry life. I reckon those warriors holding the bridge can be fought off. If it comes to that. Whispers. Moans. Disharmony. They drifted through me like an unknown language. Clausus, non movere! And if the darkest one was Shah, Moonrise must be her wretched sister, Saluna. I balked at the thought of her breaking my goddess. Obede me! Resisto mortem! Voco muras! A spike of defiance quickly smothered. Too afraid, too broken. Damned gnolls are everywhere! I assured the guard that the child was not in danger. The dead goblin was silent. Even magic could not coax more words from him. Baldur's Gate. A fine city, really. Though no water deep. I stashed the bag. Something clinked among the coins. The bear's nose twitched fearfully. The sense he knew grew ever fainter, and they still weren't back. Baldur's Gate. As good a destination as any, wouldn't you say? Intelligenti pauca. I wonder this shoddy wall hasn't already collapsed. Parabellum! Iacto te! No, I don't think I did. You're not telling me the whole truth. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Confusion, resolve, and a hint of gratitude. I wasn't sure what to make of it. Devilkin. Am I in the hells? Despite her distended stomach, she was still slavering, still starving. Enough fairy tales for one day in any case. A religion. Or a cult. All influenced by their absolute. A deep, sad whine escaped from the dog. He bowed his head. Era! Morbidos! Nor was there rest. I took fully of her until I drained her of all ecstasy. Abuno disque omnes! Time to get this thing fired up. I stumbled. The tiefling landed a glancing blow across the man's temple. That's locked for a reason. Let's not disturb it. The hyena dismissed me with a growl. She looked like she was ready to give birth and wanted peace. Esto perpetua! <gasps> the tadpole writhed. My mind suddenly reeled as if bitten and then dropped to her knees. Venenum! Still nothing. Someone forgot to oil their equipment. Everything here is rusted to the hells and back. The crab froze in terror as I approached it again. I drew myself up and bellowed. Good. Let's go find that priestess. No more prayers. Only silence and dust. Ugh. It's a fine haul, and we earned it. Damn! Some of these mushrooms are illusions. Whatever killed those gnolls might be nearby. Careful. I doubt it will bring us to the astral. It's a creche we need. I tried to imagine the purpose of such a creature. Distracted by my thoughts, I let my guard down. Resorges! Well, he's gone now. For better or for worse, I realised he prayed to Kelimvor as he expected to soon perish and face the Lord of Death's judgement. Vita mortis cario! The tadpole writhed in ecstasy. Finally, the way was clear. It was coming. It was coming. All life shuddered from the corpse. The magic was spent. I became one with Will. Shame gripped him as he considered the tools at his disposal. A red dragon. Tyrannical, greedy, and vain. I pitied whoever it was hunting. In darkest hour, a concord made, twixt harp and wild, against the shade. Pulcrior! I realised the crab needed water fast. It would die without it. Maledicte es! Tskva! This cannot, must not, be our fate. A dragon rider. My kin are hunting. Blood will be spilled. Frontinula fides! She seemed confused half snapping at me, half nuzzling into my hand. Then she was gone. Be ready. Whoever, or whatever did this, could be close. A scrying eye. Best not do anything suspicious while it's watching. Something over there. The Mind Flayer's corpse twitched, then collapsed again. 
It could speak no more. As the corpse rose, my parasite squirmed in recognition. What was... Hmm. Never mind. Was in another family right up till Mum stole it. But it's mine now. All I have. The necromancy of Thay. Ominous. But Gail might find it useful. Mors incerta vita certissima. Frange. Those two must have history. <sighs> then the sovereign droned a new melody, cautious but welcoming. She cackled. The man's remaining flesh twisted and contorted. Green blouse, brown hair. That must be Miri. Schio di dici pecto. Flame walking and god killing. A story for the ages, I reckon. And it's about us. Vita mortis cario. Not sure what the other mushrooms are. Our minds fused, lusting for something that was gone. I approached the dying monster. This was the thing that had abducted me. The beast turned to me defensively, her lights flickering, and I felt a familiar lurch. The tadpole, the flame sputtered away. The sickle was mine for the taking. The crab wriggled miserably as it hit the bottom of my bag with a wet thunk. It's trying to escape! Veritas credo, oculos! <gasps> Dum vita est, spes est. The moment I moved, the foot shot up, and I felt more than heard my nose crack. Signum arcanum, incomodum, cupora sana, occhior. Oh, hells. Something just woke up. The mind flayer was already half dead. It probably just lost control. The ox snorted. She knew how to handle danger. Perure! Iretio inspira! Susa bark. A rare commodity. The crab snapped its claws at me in defiant outrage. To summon those vines. The power's impressive. The spell had no effect. The corpse had no more answers to give. Fireplace isn't real. What's hidden behind it? Et alibi! I hear shouting. Someone needs help. Such beauty. Such power. Eferve. <laughs> A prophecy about people falling from the sky. Could it really be about us? They wanted the weapon. Darkness and sun, barely contained. None of our concern, then. A crest should be our target. I saw dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spread through the earth. There's tunnels everywhere. Who would dig these? And why here? Mortum tuum sum! The wolf bared his teeth. He only took orders from his master, and his master wasn't here. Dead drow and some skeletons. I wonder what happened. What's done is done. Arguing won't change anything. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. Every breath, every blink proved exhausting. A long day awaited me. Tracks. Five or six knolls. Heading north. Chasing the caravan survivors, I'd bet. Bunch of empty boxes and spider webs. Guess Lolth's cultists haven't been back here in a while. It glared at me with one eye. A broken spear protruded from the other. A scene flashed. Two paladins and a cleric, marching through the door, shrouded in the glow of the divine. Calm brown eyes stared at the colourful man gesticulating before it. The human was trying to communicate. The hermit crab had stayed deep in its shell since we left the swamp. It's lovely. Not every deal will work out in our favour. That doesn't mean we should stop helping people. Tornitros! My skull ached before I could take a step, and I was the creature. I felt her irritation and indignity. The poor creature was on the brink of death, but there was still time. They both looked at the bard. Their chattering intensified, mimicking her faltering song. Ragslin scowled, shocked by his own words, and a jolt shot through my skull. It's time we had a talk with her, don't you think? The body was still. Sounds like the goblins are celebrating. They'll be easy to cut down. The corpse remained silent. He didn't know. After dragons and gith and the hells themselves conspiring to kill me, I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod. The murk cleared to reveal a face. Mine. What is the creature doing to those corpses? <coughs> he stood still and chirped sadly. A single blow would end his suffering. I tried to follow her example and make the gesture. Mortua vita mea. The heat coming off that door. Opening it could spell trouble. Fiat Lux! 
It cringed in response to my sunny vision and revealed its own home, a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. No, I don't care how desperate we are. Looting tombs is wrong. The owlbear's wounds healed instantly. The broken spear was ejected with a wet pop. Astarian, where'd he go? It's a city, Dolt, and I need to get there. She stared at the ground as I greeted her, unresponsive. Uh, the poison. It's too much. It's too late. I did my best to wipe the dirt from my face and look presentable. Adventuring was murder on one's wardrobe, though. Mayor, Fortior! I felt the ox's excitement. She was ready for the road beneath her hooves, the wind on her back. Venenum! This parasite lets us control other people. I thought it was supposed to kill us. A splinter of ice worked its way into my mind. That, or we've just prolonged its misery. Ugh. Umbrai! Hmm. Scratch marks on the floor. This crevice was empty, save a bit of dust. The creature's eyes rolled back in its head, equal parts bliss and agony. The hideous corpse rose, tentacles writhing. Obedi me, invisibilis. My kin's dragons should be savouring this kill. Ah! Gaining confidence, he started a song, abandoning his nest-building efforts. I felt a shock of agony as the mind flayer cut through my defences, piercing my mind. Blue. Visions consumed me once more. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. Secretium brarum. Oh, I don't know what I slept on, but my neck's killing me. Suspicion flooded Ragslin's mind. My brain howled as I considered my final question. Gela. Around the dog's neck was a collar. Etched on it was a name. Scratch. I was one with my assailants. Our minds fused together. They were frightened. Lost. Killed without a mark. Who the hells does she serve? The poison's staying with us, then. For the best. In one swift move, the armoured man's fist made contact with a sickening crunch. I pity anyone caught by those things. We were lucky to get out with the loot. I'm exhausted. Better find somewhere to camp soon. In Comadom! The owlbear's reach made light work of my efforts, knocking me back. In a low voice, I said I'd cut him down over his damned locket if I had to. Resarchio! Morio! The surrounding goblins shuffled nervously, several drawing their weapons. So Alundo knew all of this would happen. Let's hope he saw a happy ending then. My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. <gasps> he now belonged to the circle. He would obey the sovereign. <gasps> Something tore right through these people. They didn't stand a chance. Are we really going to let these goblins walk all over us? What a crude teleportation mechanism. But it's a simple way to the Underdark. Get it! Not this time! Huh. Where's Lazel? My intrusion jolted the bear from sleep. No consideration this time. No warnings. She roared. The size of that thing. Looks so much bigger when it's flying above you. Faccio voco fere! Looks like a spider... man... Decapitating a mind flayer. Someone got creative. Ex textura! This man was delusional. This had clearly been a temple dedicated to the false sister, Saluna. A strange coin. I wonder what it's worth. Then they surged past me up the stairs. Another! A mere hatchling could do finer work. Please. My destiny will not be dictated to me by some soothsayer. The bear raised its hackles and a low, rolling growl shook my bones. Monsters weren't welcome here. Ira et dolor! Brushing away the dirt of time, I could make out the name etched into the cover. The necromancy of Thay. We'll prove him wrong. Our minds melted into one. The deep rothe was slammed with panic and confusion. The bird hopped around, scanning sticks and flowers, looking for a nice addition to his nest. Schio didici pecto. Shouldn't do that right now. Her thoughts remained closed to me. <laughs> what rotten hell did this tart spring from? Oh, my stomach aches. I gingerly kept time with her. You want to give up more of your important bits? Fine, but I'm not making that mistake twice. Wonder who was inside. No point in squabbling further. Let's move on. I noticed the telltale clumsiness of goblins, alongside something more light-footed. Drow. The goblin king bowed, obedient. The flesh of his tribe became the flesh of the absolute. The stone was warm to the touch, 
its carved symbols pulsed with necromantic energy, keeping perfect time with my heart. How many are there? Eferve! And through that chaos, a steady hand, ordering her to kill the Dwergar. Her teeth, a row of deadly needles, shone as they dove into my throat, blood spraying. Eactote! <clears throat> her eyes narrowed. She'd been expecting someone else, someone familiar. The mirror glinted in the light. The moment Emelium's mind pierced mine, the tadpole pulsed with power. Good. Let's slay the fiend and save some souls. A cave. I dislike this stone sky. Too easy for quarry to hide. I felt nothing but a quiet sense of calm. Then the sovereign droned a new melody, cautious but insistent. The drow's corpse twitched as the magic took hold. My words fell on deaf ears as the two men stared each other down. Frange! The tadpole was tampered with. That complicates matters. Now where'd he go? Stupefacio! Salunite drivel. Must be connected with that chest. It bears the same symbol. I was swallowed by a chorus of frenzied music. Through one creature sang many voices. The harmony of a Myconid collective. Then, a suffocating wave of divine rage surged through the spider pit. The Zentarim. Mercenaries and cutthroats. Useful friends, if you can afford them. Everyone needs a piece of hope to cling to. At least we have this one. The corpse raised its head, staring at me. Fulgor! Unless the Zalando also wrote a primer on alien tadpole removal, I say we keep moving. I needed to explain it to them in a way they understood. Dying might be better than turning into a mind flayer. Hmm. Deep no make, but the design is anything but. What was this ford? Shaking with the goddess's fury, the spiders screamed, then attacked. As the horn sounded, howls and guttural war cries responded from the edge of the forest. The animals around us fell silent. It shivered in resonance with my remembered pain and revealed its own. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Well, if everything's pre-written, nothing can go wrong then. Right? He turned and yapped at the corpse, as if to try to wake it. Gluttony. The rat's ears twitched in interest. The creatures clutched the pouch possessively. I had no doubt. A spider egg was nestled within. The water looked calm. I could lie down and rest. The moment Emelium's mind pierced mine, the tadpole pulsed with power. Wait, why did my collar just vibrate? Coralon Star! That is grotesque! I awoke in pain. My back, my hands, even my tongue ached. The pig stared at me. It honked loudly. But then she felt a warm swirl of embarrassment. The spell's magic waned as the corpse became still. I could ask no more questions. Tonitros! Obedime. Curious. Finally. I can think again. There's got to be another way in. I opened the book where I'd left off. The glyphs dancing before my eyes. Nor was there rest. She took fully of me. Hour after hour, until I had no sweat or soul left to give. Hmm. Shouldn't take long to fix. Hope it doesn't see us. Text is too faded. Doesn't tell me who was worshipped here. Screams of terror pierced the air. A dead language. Something ancient must have been worshipped here. Mind flare machinery. Better watch what I touch. Best we keep an eye out for more signs of this tampering. Let's get going. Spike paused to consider, then gave Will a wide grin. Magis amica veritas. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Anger, bitterness, a will to survive. As the coin disappeared into the well, I heard a soft clink, not a splash. The tattoos were strange, but I couldn't identify anything else unusual about it. Some kind of tank. My words fell on deaf ears. The creature's hold on them was too strong. Perhaps it's best to stop debating in mixed company. Dim Nia's eyes snapped from the dead Dwergar to me. His mind was a cold claw in my head, digging for memories. Resisto! Careful. Even the mushrooms down here can't be trusted. The smaller spider raised a consoling claw. Hmm. Only one serving for me, I guess. I knew bloodlust when I saw it. Glut claimed purpose, but thrilled in violence for its own sake. Occur! A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. Well. After you, I couldn't make sense of what he was saying. The fight had rattled the bear. She wheezed, exhausted, swaying from side to side. 
Good work. Thought we had a fight on our hands. The dog's hackles raised even more as his growls deepened. Es pride I may. The choir faded. A single melody rose above the others, brassy and commanding. Zastam was a powerful lich that ruled the land of Thay, driving many of the Red Wizards out of their ancestral homeland. The stone's less worn here. Recently uncovered, the captive's mouth was still, yet her voice was clear. The growl petered out into a whine at the mention of the name. Her eyes widened at my tail as she listened intently. Lazelle held my gaze, searching for signs of weakness. I didn't spot anything out of the ordinary. I said he seemed confused. Dicera! The bear blinked at me in surprise before she reared back and roared. I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod to reveal a face. Mine. OBS. I felt a whisper of thanks as the door's prisoner faded away. It fits! I struck fast, but not fast enough. She shrieked, thrashing helplessly. Oh, hells. Owlbear eggshells. An unhatched one would fetch quite a price. Through her eyes, I saw the other tieflings. What little of value they had and where they kept it safe. She and her druid allies bloodied Shah's forces. But Shah persists. She thrives. Leviata! Sounds like a violent goddess. I saw myself through her eyes. A pulsing red cluster of organs. Feast. No. The voice had forbidden this meat. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the child move through the rocks. A mind flayer. No intention of letting that happen. Quadico fake. Let's just stay out of the Mykonid's business. That looks sturdy. Untied from its moorings, the boat drifted away. <sighs> a scrying eye. Or whatever's left of it. I'd better watch your back then. Stultissime! I saw the gallery, its walls lined with the hag's victims, their bodies and minds twisted beyond ruin. Smells like burnt flesh in here. Gigans! The feeling swelled, then sputtered out. As I edged closer to the mirror, a pale face appeared, contorted in fear. Fists slammed against the mirror's surface, again and again. Hag's curse, I guess. The stone was warm to the touch. Each carved symbol pulsed with necromantic energy. Non movere! Before unleashing a bloodthirsty shriek. Blinded, I'd be in breach of my contract. My soul would be Mizora's for good. I watched Gale perusing the book with a true wizard's fascination. A few pages in, something startled him. Her heart rattled all the harder. But this time, with anticipation. Free. Free. Broken. Pitiful. It felt ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. Morsinkerta vita kertissima. The animals chirped and chattered to one another frantically. They seemed distressed. Here lies Aridin. He yearned for glory and adventure. And he got it. Hell surrounded me, flames licking at my body. The tadpole in my head convulsed. <laughs> Glad to hear we're not becoming a band of smugglers. We'll make sure it gets back to its owner. Ida! These webs are everywhere. Calm yourself. They're survivors, not soldiers. The boar stared longingly at the pool, yearning for its soothing waters. Expelote! Let's see what those harpies were hoarding. This power is ours to command. Those dreams don't matter. I kept time with her. Amicus animalis. Another brain. Parabellum! The crab shrunk into its shell, claws giving a lethargic click. The crab stayed hidden in its shell, using a claw to block the opening. I quickly pieced together her plan. The sanctuary she was seeking was the grove I'd visited. Silentium! Manus potentis paro! Myconids. Just as I thought. The needle seesawed back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Schio didici pecto! The spiders scattered. I felt their panic. The beloved was taken. The Dwergar were dead. The ones who'd hit her and whipped her, bleeding out on the ground. The corpse remained silent. He didn't know. I said he seemed to know the answer to everything. The corpse went limp, exhausted from the questioning. Pulso! Damp stone and darkness. Is this the underdark? <laughs> Groomsh's rotten eye would taste better than this. The sovereign's song halted as it measured my might. Demonic dogs. They're like vermin. I can't fit through here. Wonder if there's another way in. It may not be the best idea. Tempestos! God spare me. 
Why did I think eating a second one was a good idea? The face was crafted to be pleasing, but the personality was just a reflection of the wizard that created it. It didn't respond. The spell's magic was spent. Through music and vision, the Sovereign revealed the truth of the fungal creature before me. I did my best to keep up with her. Long as they're not here, I'm happy. Umberly was the dark mistress of the sea and drowned those who didn't respect her power. Dolor! The magic waned. I could ask no more questions. <sighs> her hands hid her face, preventing me from reading her expression. Contact. He fell to the ground unconscious. What creatures live in waters this dark? Esto perpetua. Configo! <laughs> ah, yes. Goblins. Known for their reliability, honour and excellent body odour. Seco! The corpse let out an angry hiss of foul air, then was silent. Occhior! Not much point in arguing further. The damn thing's stuck in us either way. I missed. Chittering, the squirrel fled. It sounded like laughter. Damn nuts. The cub shuffled over to his mother and nuzzled at her huge, still bulk. The book snapped closed. I can't remember what happened next, but I'm told it wasn't pretty. <clears throat> Detano! It had taken age to hack through all this. It's planting animating spores. It means to raise the dead. Mushrooms. Poisonous, if memory serves. She squeaked a final warning. Break the rules and there would be trouble and scurried away. The rat sniffed the chest, then leapt in, tail twitching gratefully. Through her eyes I saw myself, skin glistening with sweat, hands bound, ecstasy or terror, maybe both. Hells, I felt the rat's impatience, to wriggle between the cracks in the floor, to the safe space beneath. That might be worth a look. This trunk's rotten, shouldn't put too much weight on it. Excellent. Now let's go find that healer. <laughs> Shadow druids. Corga means to turn the circle. Sol invictus! Manus potentis paro! Parabellum! As if deep in the earth, in the cold of winter, she slept. Sure. No, that couldn't be. The blessing of Saluna still shone through here. I told them if they wished to live, they should walk away. Kai kote! Still, best not make too much noise. Dwergar faces appeared before me, one by one each twisted by zealous cruelty. What was in that tart? Oh, my stomach's doing somersaults. The corpse made a wet, gurgling sound as the magic waned. I could ask no more questions. Despite the chaos in the camp, the adventurer slept soundly, wounds expertly bandaged. Kaido! First druid and now last druid. Thanks to us. Nice for you. Aredissimus! Ah! The dead goblin was silent. Even magic could not coax more words from him. What happened to Marina's husband was awful. But we had to free her from that debt. <laughs> I told her I wasn't her master, but I was a friend to her kind. Oculus tempestatis, pallidamors. I'm not usually one to judge, but... <sighs> Tempora muntantor. From the underdark to a hag's lair. Like jumping from a pot into boiling oil. The rat snapped, squeaking and carried on its way. The door gave way with a loud crack. Treme! No thanks. What is this? I'd call it luck. The flayer was weak and distracted. Surge. They do seem a bit short-handed. Balling my fists, I told her to return what was mine before I got angry. The bird sang as loud as his lungs would allow, practicing fervently. Treme! Then they left me in peace and surged out the door and up the stairs. Cuabor! Diminuate! He snarled a warning of his own, flattening his ears and lowering his body, ready to pounce. The infuriated spiders crossed my hand and scaled my arm. The swarm was coming. I said that as near as I could tell, he was in perfectly good health. Amicus animalis! Wait, the tadpole. It was doing something, taking something I'd never get back. Incertus pulcher imperio! Incertus pulcher imperio! Will paused, then took a hot poker and held it against the man's leg. He produced an ice pick and cleaned it quickly on his cuff. The hobgoblin turned to me and the parasite squirmed in my skull. The eye returned my stare, unblinking. Teocludo oculos! Whatever's inside that chest must be extremely valuable. I said I could still extort him, if he wished. Stupefacio! The inscription spoke of Moonrise, a reference to vile Saluna, no doubt. Ubies. The Sovereign replied with a vision, 
a stone door creaking open to reveal glowing light. Before I could say anything else, she sprinted away. Maybe later. Abuno disque omnes. Without a cure, I could not restore my honor before Vlakith. What if something happened to him? My hand trembled, refusing to do harm to the tadpole. A flood of stony potatoes, tinged with hate, tumbled through his mind. Smells like a troll's crack. <clears throat> Fancy amulet like this is probably enchanted. Gail, take a look. We need a way out. Now. Quadico fake. No use. It's blocked. I found myself looking into huge, soft eyes, filled with a curious sparkle. The bear sat back, ready for a tale. Resisto frigus! Sleep claimed me, and determination buoyed my dreams. Damn thing could blot out the sun. Her ears wriggled thoughtfully as she considered my offer. Strange-looking staff. Is that something you'd want, Gail? <sighs> My head. My skull pounded in response to the Gith Yankee's white hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. <coughs> the corpse had nothing further to say to me. Tempora mutantor. Odd name for a crash? Timask and torch stalks. Hell of a combination. The rat's nose twitched. Her eyes flitted between the prisoner, the goblins, and the door. Those beasts are here for a reason. Weapon blueprints. They call for Susa Bark. I had prepared all my life to fight the Gake. I dreamed of presenting one of their vile heads to Vlakith in Tunarath. My skull briefly ached, and I was her. I felt her anger at the dragon rider she'd confronted. Veni et me! Well, whatever you're into. Hostium Manera! Esurio! Silentium! Excellent armor. Drowcraft, of course. Something divine lingers here but I don't recognize this presence. Punge! The very same as the vile little creature lurking within me. Poison. I suppose that's one way to fix a monster eating you from the inside out. Oh, the smell. How old is that butter? Strange to see Saluna's temple in red. Her followers would never stand for it. We had to do something to help Marina. Statues. Strange. Macte Vartute. I prepared to free my companion from the chains. Wait, this wasn't a scroll a moment ago. Magical lights. But how to turn them on? Voco Arvina. Wyvern poison. Foul stuff, but it works. Looks like the booze got the better of them. They're practically unconscious. Weapons brandished. They charged the hag's lair. Monster. Death is too good for it. Ex nihilo. What's done is done. Time to move on. Extende! Then let's get this done. The corpse had no more answers to give. Volca Nubes! Won't budge. Baldur's Gate. The most vulgar city along the coast. Or so I've read. Not much of a god after all. Whatever power he had, it died with those creatures. The chains snapped as I expanded my chest. The corpse stared at me, hate clouding his eyes. Myconids. That explains the voices. I don't see how a creature like that could be of any use to us. Something caught the light in the water. Weapons. Shattered, but not beyond repair. For once, the rat paused for a moment, then squeaked loudly. It skittered away, stopped, and looked back. The injured man locked eyes with me. I felt a familiar squirming in my head. Non movere! The dog lunged at me, teeth bared. <laughs> I asked the bear to trust me. I was looking for Halcyn, harp and wild. A riddle to some, but I'd read enough to be familiar with language like this. Made it out. That thing doesn't look too happy to be free. I had seen similar books in wizard's libraries. A tome on Thean magic. A rare and expensive find. But people had gone mad reading less dangerous texts. Vita mortis cario! Looks like there's a chest buried in that hay. That tail bristled as her gaze fixed upon my feet. I was in her territory. In Certus Pulcher Imperio! It's done now. We don't have the luxury of second thoughts. She could smell them. Goblins, wargs, and something else. She would defend her home, whatever the cost. Vincit qui petitor. I realized he was casting detect thoughts. I felt him rummaging in my head already. I bet we can work out how to open it. The hyena responded to my greeting with an anxious cackle. The towers seized. The battle done. The moonrise broke the darkest one. Voco speakai! The echoes of the drumbeat faded to silence. The dog would not move. He barked at the dead man as if to try and wake him. Fire spilled across my vision, dragon's breath. 
The tadpole slithered, twisting deeper into my skull. Faccio voco fere! What's this feeling of... Power. As I looked into the beast's large eyes, our minds started to connect again, then stopped. The corpse remained silent. She didn't know. I recalled a recent scandal. A patriar of Baldur's Gate who'd wished to marry a commoner. I was swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sang many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. The corpse refused to speak to its killer. As the fire settled, tension bled from my body. A dragon rider. My kin are near. That could have been worse. I stashed the bag in my pack. Something clinked among the coins. They're looking for people that survived the nautiloid. That's bad news. The world was a blur as she cast around for a way out. Escape? Escape! Vivat crescat floriat! The old woman's face creased with false concern. I realized she had lied about seeing this girl, Marina. <laughs> Naturally, we earned this. Perfect. Knowles saw our whole world as a meal. I realised this voice was acting as a leash, but it wouldn't hold them for long. She sniffed at me again, one wild thing considering another. Then, recognition? Achidum! Diminue! Secreti umbrarum! I felt the barest hint of life from within the door. The infuriated spiders crossed my hand and scaled my arm. The swarm was coming. Fiat voluntas Dei. The growl took on a note of confusion, frustration, and the bear lunged. I struggled with the set of lockpicks until they were bent entirely out of shape. But the lock wouldn't budge. Then he glanced in the direction of the woods and growled, frightened. There were too many predators lately. I shook my head. All they had claim to was their lives, if they left right now. This sword has all kinds of power running through it. Gail, want to look? Volo non fugia! I need to get out of here, and fast. Vita mortis cario! Strangling me, my head burned from the effort. But I saw nothing. I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod. Devoid of flesh, only darkness. The bear hovered between sleep and waking. Her nostrils flared and her eyes flicked open. She bucked. I wouldn't control her. Et alibi! <gasps> Resisto ignem! The sovereign's song slowed to the pace of a dirge. It was still in mourning. I could tell she'd almost let something important slip. The boar pranced around, haunches clenching and unclenching impatiently. She sniffed at me again, one wild thing considering another. An unforgivable loss. He'd have made a fine ally. I realized there was magic at work, some type of spell, an illusion. For a terrible moment, my hand twitched. The corpse opened his mouth but said nothing. The dog remained at the dead man's side as if in mourning. Pulso! I saw another vision. My lifeless body, wrapped in tendrils. The Sovereign was threatening me. Too many predators lately. And he'd never been the strong one. That wasn't a bullet, was it? His eyes didn't open, but his lips parted with a rasping wheeze. I feel a breeze. I wonder what's down there. Curculus mortis! Well, praying didn't help. Magic stirred the corpse to unnatural life. It awaited my questions. She remained still for a long moment, measuring the threat I posed and dismissing it. Morskerta! The tadpole. It was doing something. Taking something I'd never get back. I'd prefer not to see it again, that's for sure. The rat hesitated just a moment before scurrying over to me. Her flesh melted away, revealing a hideous creature with pockmarked skin. Your world has strange customs. The survivor they were trying to save. It was the geich from the ship. Passages collapsed. Won't be able to get through here in a hurry. I'd have given my life to save it, nurse it back to health. I felt a cold hand caressing my mind as the drow appraised me. Sharp, deep, and still fresh. Some monster did this, marking its territory. We'll need a cover story. I said I wasn't like other drow. It would be a joy to serve it, dying an honor. My muscles strained, my veins bulged. The chains held strong. Definitely magic. Though, I wonder what they mean. <laughs> the ogre must have moved on to new deals. There was no doubt. This was the geek responsible for my parasite. 
and I had questions. Psionic feelers crept across my mind, like a pickpocket's finger seeking flaws in fabric. Obedi me. Baldur's Gate. A wretched cesspool of vice and immorality. And rather fun to boot. The bear glanced in the direction of the woods, then growled, frightened. Pool Crior. Ah, that is vile. <laughs> My tongue may never be the same. The lock clicked and opened. I opened the book to the first page, with its shifting glyphs and strange whispers. His neck was broken from the fall, but his mouth opened as he looked at me. Come here, please. The spell's magic faded. The corpse could speak no more. Sifting deeper, she saw the mind flayer holding a wriggling tadpole to my eye. Malaios! It buried deeper with delight. The crab's claw scratched something hard, which it flung into the air. Interesting. I wonder if those blueprints survived. I took his hand. It was an innocent request, after all. A vision flashed through my head. Caves crumbling, gnomes and dwergar digging. Chaos. In certus pulcher imperio! In moments, she had mixed together a foul-smelling concoction and handed it to me, becoming the smooth wooden surface of the door before me. Smiling, the girl opened her pack. The corpse remained silent. She didn't know. The tiefling landed a glancing blow across the man's temple. It was for the best. The cub would have died anyway. For once, she was happy to be bothered. A waste of... You have interesting priorities. Precis alia fero. <sighs> Where's Karlak? Lapis root. Sapphire. These do not grow in such a wet climate. I remembered Umbali was the goddess of the sea. She drowned those who displeased her. Vevero. Stars and the full moon. Is this what that dwarf's poem was talking about? Vocoglacias! The rat sniffed me, then waddled away. All right. Does anyone know how to open the damn thing? I'd been robbed. In venium via. All memory and all future was lost. There were no parasites to cleanse and no monsters to vanquish. The corpse stirred, dead flesh laced with magic. My fingers clanged loudly against the strings. The bard winced. Every devil's a curse, whether we know him or not. Let's put Raphael out of our minds. I'll throw in with Asmodeus himself if it fixes our little wriggler problem. The flames fell away, a mere illusion. I was surrounded by the forest again, sitting at peace. A key. It might open the toll house vault. The door shuddered but stood firm. Harpers and druids, working together. A formidable force. Ugh. What is that? Rotting flesh? Oculus tempestatis! The flakes squelched the fires. The sword was unchanged. Something feels off about this tree. Flaming fist letting Zent run free. The situation must be grim. Don't group me with the likes of them. I willed myself to crush the life out of the tadpole. Sol Invictus. The spiders relaxed slightly, but I felt their hunger and fear beneath the surface. Mutatis mutandis! The corpse fell silent. It could answer no more questions. Manus potentis paro, impero mortus, video veritatem. So many dead. But no signs of a struggle. We'll stay cautious. There has to be a way to get everyone out intact. I pictured a silver blade cleaving through Geich and their thralls, one after another. Well, well. What have we here? Gustas Dulcis. The corpse went limp, exhausted from the questioning. By waters still, neath watching trees, a hallowed place for Mother Peace. I peered through the telescope. I said I sought healing. Where was this camp? He tapped the pick and my eye sprang from its socket, dangling wetly on my cheek. I've heard such predictions before. I've never been the subject of them. Until we know every mind flayer that was aboard is dead, don't trust anything you see. More air. I never did find out why the squirrel attacked me, but I'd clearly won this fight. Morskerta. Nature can provide for the cub. Perhaps it'll live. Looks like the hag made a shortcut. Clever. Vita excolator. Then his sad eyes met mine again. He would join me later, they seemed to say. You're more cunning than you look. I thought we had a fight on our hands. It's calling its pack. Vincere est vivere. It was possible I'd just claimed the squirrel's territory by right of conquest. Lolth sigils on every box. If this place wasn't already abandoned, I'd set it ablaze. Kai Kote! A game to the featherless ones, but life and death to her. Manus potentis paro! Hmm. Perhaps something's missing. A dirty ring landed at my feet. 
Not here. Let's talk when we make camp. <coughs> Bit rotten, this is. I've had worse. I never did find out why the squirrel attacked me, but I'd clearly won this fight. Frangie! Ah! She studied me for a moment before twitching her ears. Compromise. It's a Sousa tree. Absorbs magic. Tibidor penas! It shuffled back, eyes still fixed on me. A silent ultimatum. Corpora sana! The hideous corpse rose, tentacles writhing. The creature from the wreckage. The cub was oblivious to me. A single blow would end his suffering. The flakes squelched the fires. The sickle was unchanged. They drooled. Their glittering eyes moved from me to the door, urging me to release them. As I approached, a guttural scream and a succession of quick bangs rattled the door. Ex nihilo, voco spicai, demento te. The man coughed hard, but his eyes shot open and the colour returned to his cheeks. Ve victis. A charm on the hag's body glowed briefly. Sigut catus, agilius. What was that? She hears of the tadpole and thinks we can be bound. The symbols darted beneath my eyes, warping and twisting. My head throbbed, but I almost understood. Hmm. It won't move. A brief, lurching connection. The sensation of falling into my own image endlessly. I said shenanigans like these are what give us a bad name. Just give it back. I will not fail her. He was staring past me again, as if I wasn't there. Baldur's Gate. That's a port city. No dogs allowed. Sad. What creatures thrive in a lake this dismal? A stone rune. Long forgotten by the looks of it. As she turned to me, her thoughts mingled with mine, a cold hand caressing my brain. And yet, beneath that building rage, I felt guilt. A memory. The beast daubed the symbol of the absolute on a cave wall in blood, and the murk cleared to reveal a face. Mine. He smelled of sweat and a dusty road long travelled. And, yes, cow dung. That stench. Dead owlbear prey, no doubt. I disagree. We had every right to take our reward. Hmm. A game for surface children. His eyes fluttered closed as the spell's magic waned. Fungal roots wove through my mind, seeking my true intent. Diminuate! Fresh water. There must be a settlement somewhere nearby. Shaking with the goddess's rage, the spiders screamed, then attacked. I saw the drow cursing at the fallen rocks, then carving through the deep gnomes in his rage. He sniffed the air as I approached, then let out a huff, disappointed. I realised he was waiting for a mate. Look where city be plucket. Is this just for decoration? Useless. No, I would not permit it. Every abomination would be gutted and burned to ash. <coughs> Blood, sweat, and dust. Always the fight and the singing, screaming joy of it. The dog considered me with a cock of his head. Wariness lingered in his stance. We did what we did. Let's just see this through to the end. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. To it I wasn't a halfling, but rather... The bird only hopped aside, picking at my foot and then went back to worrying over his nest. Pincers pierced my flesh, and pain shot up my arm and across my back. Wait, why did that strange dog collar just vibrate? I tasted the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. Makeske arde! A pause, and then the flicker of a tongue across my neck. Here lies Connor, beloved husband, and a tasty little morsel to boot. If that was true... Moonrise must be a reference to Shah's divine sister, Saluna. Phew. It's broken. Quadico fake. Clearly, we're not going to agree on this. Better to keep moving. What the? This stuff is everywhere. Salunite rubbish. Peri venenum cave curculum. Sunshine. Summer without ending. And with it, the sadness. Salunite drivel. What's this symbol on it? The myconid song went silent. The crab sat in a damp spot that darkened the corner of my bag. We need to find him before it's too late. The roaring furnace awaited an offering. The growl deepened, then burst forth in a roar. I noticed the armoured man twitch. He was about to erupt. Animating spores. The myconid means to raise the dead. Never seen a red moon before. Manus potentis paro. Nice decoration. But does it do anything? It feels like my magic is getting drained. Keep your guard high. Let's move on. Mors tua vita mea. 
Ugh. Another helpless soul begging to be rescued. That wasn't like any spell I've ever seen before, she trailed off. I read an invitation in her eyes. Ah! He froze, waiting on my next word. Puts me in the mood to kill the rest of them, if I'm being honest. The gnoll's tadpole squirmed, responding to my intense focus. It drew strength from me. It would protect me. I could hear the gentle scratch of something against the pod lid. I'm glad we can agree on this. His desire to become a true soul, his role as leader of these people, of course. He wanted to deliver them to the Absolute as a symbol of his devotion. Gela! I recognised the druids, or their garb at least. Elders of a druid circle. This was once a sacred place to my people. A divine sanctuary. Clearly, we're not going to agree. Let the matter drop. The glass feels... warm. Just an old prayer. Cupio virtus licet. The bear licked her lips, still grateful for the snack. The spiders chittered to each other and eyed me hungrily. I asked if the guard truly wanted bloodshed, because I wouldn't hesitate. Locked from the inside. Curculus mortis. The full moon beneath the wrist. Maybe a goblin flipped it upside down. The bear whined again, panicked this time. He couldn't believe it. His eyes flicked nervously to the back of the cavern. I realised he was hiding something. The stone was warm to the touch. Negative energy jumped to meet my fingertips. Then the creature spoke in visions. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, knoll teeth, dripping blood. Its anger swelled and burst, leaving only loneliness and fear. No help here. No fight. Intelego. She balked, refusing to be bridled by my soft grip. The whispers, the pain... It all disappeared in an instant. I was myself again. The tadpole writhed in ecstasy. Finally, the way was clear. It was coming. It was coming. Its one good eye flicked away for a moment. I followed its glance. Ex nihilo! I saw dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spread through the earth. A secret door. I wonder what someone was so eager to hide. Then it settled. Turning him over was the right thing to do. Nothing's happening. But it doesn't look broken. To make matters worse, the spiders chose that moment to attack. I can't forge a weapon without starting a fire. I wondered if it could hear these thoughts, if it knew I was planning a rebellion. That smell. I saw another vision. My lifeless body, wrapped in tendrils. The Sovereign was threatening me. I don't know what he read, but it had an effect. His eyes were hungry, but pained. <laughs> The tieflings have teeth after all. Hopefully it comes no closer. The frightened myconid circle conjured mildewed vines. They encircled and transformed the Dwergar. Get out! Get out of my head! With a gasp, the corpse shuddered. Mortalis! They've come to their senses, so... Yes? Her hand signal was quick and clean. Blink and you'd miss it. <sighs> The corpse had nothing left to say. This text is ancient. A dedication to a forgotten god? We should see if there's a chance to use this power again. Challenge the gods for their domain. I'd settle for getting my own brain back. Stabilio! The ox swayed his head back and forth, looking for new things to smell. We must be desperate indeed to throw in with her. Looks like Halcyn's our best bet for a cure. Dry stones lined the wall. At the bottom, something gleamed in the dappled light. With a jerk, I was pulled from the vision. The presence within shrunk, begging me not to run through it. Impressive armour. Drow handiwork, a mind flayer. No intention of letting that happen. My kin's dragons should be savouring this kill. Actually, it's home. I'm sure you'll fit right in. The talons sank deep. The owlbear lunged forward to strike again. A perfect ring of mushrooms. Nature or magic? Cuabor! The owlbear stared, then sharply inhaled my scent. Draw Ragslin's body, lurched to life. Looks like there's a little shrine over there. The myconid cloaked me in dream. Dwergar spore servants shambling toward me in unison. The sheep contemplated me dully, while chewing a mouthful of weeds. First came ice, shivers from top to toe as our lips touched. Vokoglakias! Only a fool would resist such power. She was excited to find this person in Baldur's Gate. They had something she wanted. <coughs> Come, we shouldn't linger here. 
Seems like that Salunite amulet might catch your eye, Gale. The owlbear's brute strength was too much. Its blow hammered into me. I felt its heart hammering, a desperate longing for the safety of its cave, its mother. Hmm. From the looks of that book, Gale might want it. <laughs> Lost blood, what is in that? More, Bidos. Indeed. These creatures are mightier than they look. My limbs did not obey. Our minds intertwined. I saw his siblings, Andrik and Brenner. New recruits, mine to shepherd. Hums, clicks, harmonies. They drifted through me like an unknown language. Her mind reeled, but she obeyed blindly. My grip was strong, and she couldn't defy me. All in favour, then. Let's paint that goblin camp red. Ragslin frowned in confusion at a question he would never have asked. A dangerous place to stock goods, even for a zent. It's a city, chief. The jewel of the coast. And as close to a home as I've got. Suddenly I saw what she saw. Felt what she felt. Anger. Bitterness. A will to survive. One of the nine hells. Cantote! Vincit qui petitor! Someone's in trouble. We have to help. Its shriek reached a new pitch, one of bloodlust. I noted her grimace of pain. I realised there was something wrong with her legs. The tiefling could no longer speak. I recognised the name, of course. Anyone that knew of the Red Wizards would. My skull sizzled with Ragslin's displeasure. His mouth was still, yet I heard his demand. The corpse remained still. It could say no more. The spell's power waned. I could ask no more questions. This is Lolf's descent into the Underdark. Looks like her Dryder champion's tearing open some Mind Flayers. His lips smacked together wetly and left a trail of saliva on my foot. Strange. The monster seems docile. The tablets in the same style as those glowing runes. Sounds like they've captured themselves a bard. By Eldath, guardian of groves, all fear is soothed. What in the hells? You're a vampire! The corpse shivered to one life. Ostende secretorum tuorum. It was time to decide what to do. The mirror was not amused. I warned the tiefling this creature was dangerous. Leave it to me. The tadpole writhed in ecstasy. Finally, the way was clear. It was coming. It was coming. <laughs> I felt her probing my mind, and our thoughts became entangled. A familiar sensation. She too carried a parasite. My primal ferocity thrilled her. Surrendering to it, she turned on her pack in a berserk rage. More dreams, delusions and lies. With this thing in our heads, how can we trust each other? Dolor. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. I have the plans and the Sousa bark. Now I just need a forge. The echoes of the drumbeat faded to silence. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Fractured images filled my mind. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, null teeth, dripping blood. Precisalia ferro. Moss. <laughs> Damp. <laughs> Deep places and the cities that shined there. <laughs> Whatever horrific creature was growing inside the hyena died along with her. The corpse was decomposing, but intact. Its mouth fell open as it turned to look at me. Ira et dolor. <sighs> Something's blocking it from the other side. The servant was silent. A victory of the celestial Saluna over her dark sister, Shah. The corpse snarled, teeth bloodied. Umbrai. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. <sighs> Not give Yankee to it, but rather... Configo! This would be perfect if I had Susabok, but I don't. So it isn't. Corruptus! Volo non fugia! This seems as good a place as any to make camp. Knolls and goblins marked on the map. Travel won't be easy. Minimus! Now that's a lock that screams pick me. Isn't that Auntie Ethel? Nowhere else to go if she tells. Can't let that happen. Just keep calm. Absolutely. We had every right to take our reward. Cupio Virtus Lycet. Baldur's Gate. That's where I'm from. The deep gnome stared past me, unseeing. In Nocte Concilium. She chattered back, louder and at length. I approached the gate. The foul thing was at my mercy and I would have its head. Nothing. It's not really the time for an ogre rampage, anyhow. A camp. Looks abandoned. The Dark Lady. Befouled by the Absolute's mark. 
heresy. Cave curculum! It enjoyed the bloodshed and was thrilled by the prospect of more. Tormentum! I felt only an echo from a sleeping mind, of the threat considered and already dismissed. She was testing me about Raphael. They only hunt those worth hunting. Mutatis mutandis! The corpse stared at me, waiting for my questions. An acrid scent clogged my nose as the fires raged. Susa bark burned to black flakes. The child continued staring past me. I almost pitied the creature. Too full to move, yet desperately starving. I said I had no intention of harming him. The door shook at the thought of the hag. She would be furious if she called the intruders here. The flames fell away, a mere illusion. I sat in the dark again, near Loth's majesty. The tadpole thrashed violently in my brain. My blood hummed. I was changing. Crescit Ayundo! I asked her nicely to return my belongings. They cost me a lot of money. Propria! Another broken trap. Who made these things? I travelled its mind's filaments, twisting, turning, till I reached its song centre. The ox chewed and stared with disinterest. Those aren't people. They're thralls. The voices returned, louder, stronger, commanding me to stop. The corpse let out an angry hiss of foul air, then was silent. Veritas credo oculos! It's planting spores. The myconid means to raise the dead. She flashed the hand signal Mull had taught me and turned away. The door remained firmly closed as the presence shrunk, twisting with fear and despair. My breath caught in my throat. The broken helmet bore the mark of my goddess, Shah, the Lady of Loss. Either way, they're better off. That's what matters. Sicut catus! I watched with cold realisation that this was the end of one life, but the start of another. Perfect. Better start looking for another way out of this wilderness. Someone's diary might explain what happened here. No more prayers. Only dust and silence. Flame walking and God killing. A story for the ages, I reckon. And it's about us. Caveat incantator! They hesitated, then relaxed, eyeing me. The coin disappeared into the darkness, landing with a soft clink. <coughs> 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 Haven't seen that game in years. I knew of Maglubiot, deity of the goblinoids hungry for blood and conquest. Stars and moons, like that dwarf's poem said. And these plates can be turned. The flames cooled, dispelled, as the image I knew emerged again. Wild, glorious magic. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. The gestures meant nothing to me, some sort of spell that I didn't recognise. The stone stirred with otherworldly heat at my touch. Whatever power lay within did not answer to my god. I knew it for what it was, a chant of war. Glut's reign would not be one of peace, but terror. The bear sniffed something on the floor. Old paw prints. He was waiting for another bear. Is someone singing? My skull sizzled with Ragslin's displeasure. His mouth was still, but I heard his demand. We're in the underdark. I'm home. I told him to enjoy his freedom. Phases of the moon. Light and darkness. Saluna and Shah. First gay, now this monstrosity. Burned from the inside out. Whose work is this, I wonder? A great taut drum sat before me. One strike would likely ring for miles, alerting goblin reinforcements. It's ready to go. Time to get to work. Armed scribes. But no sign of a struggle. <coughs> What's next? <coughs> I gave him a hard look. Get on with what? No opening this with that lock still on it. Then his gaze shifted back to the goblins, agitated. He growled deep in his throat. He evaluated his collection and made a happy jump. He chirped his thanks, leaving the coin aside. Agreed. Good thing this place is remote. I don't want to become known as a grave robber. I'm done. I can't wait to sleep. Vita mortis, Cario. I caught a starian trying to drink my blood last night. I took care of him, though. He'll never prey on the living again. The bear regarded me warily, wondering if I was another enemy, but his eyes held a spark of hope. Won't budge. I said I didn't need deep gnome scraps and bid him good day. Then we agree. Keep an eye out and perhaps we can fix our mistake. I said a bruise was a kind option. Some thieves lose hands. <coughs> he began to move his hand in a quick flurry of gestures. At the back of the crevice lay a bag covered with spiders. 
A shiny gold coin poked from its mouth. Torch stalk. Best watch my step. They like to explode. The trills of dying myconid younglings rattled my skull. She spun in short arcs, indicating which of the trees were hers and to be left alone. What did that do? And visions consumed me once more. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders. Silver blades held high, strangling me. As I gazed deeper, I felt a focus, an intent. Tore! I detected a distinct quiver in every note. These creatures had experienced recent tragedy. What the hells? There was a creature trapped inside. Someone's moving around in there. Despair does us no good. Let us look forward and push on. If this ship hits the ground, we're dead. Where did he go? Imps on a garth. I watched the squirrel closely and shifted my foot an inch to the left. Obey de me. Uh, where's Shadowheart? But then its grip clawed back with a vengeance. A vice locking my mind into obedience. Music to give Yankee ears. What is this made of? Tiamat's cursed spit? The flames cooled, dispelled, as the image I knew emerged again. Blood and darkness. He grasped my mind and pried it open. I felt a sudden urge to obey him. There's a breeze down here. Wonder where it's coming from. I watched the squirrel closely for a moment, but her motivations eluded me. Sounds like someone's in trouble. The dog's aggression seemed to subside a little. He sniffed the air uncertainly. I saw myself through Lazelle's eyes. To her, I was already a mind flayer, a monster in all but appearance. A tidy slot, but no rune. Forbidden knowledge, without a doubt. Something's waiting up ahead. <coughs> the knoll's tadpole twitched in response to my command, but fell limp as its host howled in rage, resisting my intrusion. Vita est, spes est. The worst of the blow was deflected away. The owl bear shrieked in outrage. A breath rasped through Liam's lungs as his eyes snapped open, terror swiftly overtaking confusion. Dissolve! He recoiled. Was I a monster too? Tu es nihil! Like its living counterparts, the corpse spoke in my mind. No Salunite would ever place the new moon at the top. Glad that caught my eye. They watched me with great interest. Their drool puddled on the floor. Marina's eyes fluttered closed as the spell's power waned. What beautiful music. Cuebor. Ragslin's mind was clouded by doubt, surprised once more by words he didn't expect. He grasped my mind and pried it open. Rage flooded my senses. Deep purples swirled into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear, chased by Dwergar. Already dead. Surge. You know... I can't tell if it's morning, angry, or just hungry. I perceived myself as it did. A cloud of shifting scents, both strange and familiar. I felt a presence in my head. The Kithrax presence. My tadpole recoiled defensively. The Gake's corpse twitched, then collapsed again. It could speak no more. Agreed, then. We'll do whatever it takes to stop the true souls. Te fideo. With a desperate squeal, the boar dashed past me before I could strike. Looks like a pack of gnolls ran through here. I could discern no information or intention in the sovereign song. Ah! Oh, that smell. Is that milk? Precis alia fero. Other than that, they did not react. It would have been quicker to kill them. My skull pounded in response to the prisoner's white-hot stare. Her lips didn't move, yet I heard her voice. The corpse's head lolled back as the magic faded. The spell was done. Fear soured to despair. The featherless ones were cruel. The prisoner howled, and the stench of charred flesh filled the room. Vivat crescat floriat! Inficio! Besides a slight tingle, my stomach didn't react to the poison. Whatever it was, it didn't look good. No more prayers. Only silence and dust. Warm, wet tentacles wrapped themselves around my head, and for the first time in my life, I doubt we'll get a warm welcome home given our condition. Mors in certa, vita certissima. The tadpole quivered. It seemed to be burrowing deeper in my mind, feasting on... on... what? The word escaped me. <laughs> that cage won't last! I bid him wait. What was a deep gnome doing above ground? Too much dust to be a new outpost. I wonder why my brethren abandoned this place. Why would a Salunite arrange the moons like that? Another pod from the ship. Could there be other survivors? Looks like someone's not a fan of Shah. 
smeared the absolute symbol all over her. The prisoner screamed and thrashed against his bonds. The telescope pointed to the left. I knew of Maglubiot, a tyrannical deity who treated his goblinoid followers as slaves. The forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. Scio di dici pecto. Pray she keeps quiet. No one takes kindly to traitors. I explained that not only was the disease gone, it had left no scars, an impossibility for the bite. Ah, my finger. Dementote. That kind of weakness sickens me. <sighs> I could feel our connection, our longing to be opened, to share our secrets. Perure. The monster's tentacles twitched weakly. It wouldn't last much longer. Its voice shivered across my brain, seeking access, trying to bend my will to its bidding. Sleep came for me as I counted the fields of the dead soon to grow. She was still ravenous, her mind a hungry pit. The flesh of the survivors hadn't been enough to satisfy her. Voco araniai. It was like fireworks in my skull. His trust was quickly waning. A goblin healer. That's a new one. But she might be the only way to keep our skulls intact. The work of the hag. No doubt about it. <sighs> Useless gnolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids could spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. The creature cringed, overwhelmed by the throngs, and revealed its own home, a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Disturbing, you mean? Veni et me. The corpse raised its head, bones cracking as it turned to look at me. This thing reeks of magic. There's a name here. Marina. Vis medicatrix. I focused the telescope on the distant object, trying to get a clear view. They sang a duet of their own, attempting to drown out her music. Horribilissimus. Arguing is just going to attract more attention. Better to let this drop. Looks like that's going to bruise. These things abandon their hosts as soon as they need to. Vile parasites. I can feel the poison clearing. I'm cured. The droid's poison is spreading. I need a cure. Fast. Gigans! I can't even see a lock to pick. Hells, we're attracting too much attention. The spell elicited a gasp, a weak echo of life. Again, visions flowed through me. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. Wait, this looks familiar. Lux in tenebra. She's not breathing. The lock on the chains opened. I knew Terenths were the currency of the Zentarim a network of merchants and mercenaries with few scruples. Geek devourers. One strike could prove lethal. Ah! Apart from an overgrowth of moss, the well looked unremarkable. All the more reason to hurry. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. Not a tiefling to it, but rather... It slithered off my hand and vanished into the undergrowth. More of those things. Her head wanted to droop even as her legs urged her to run. So tired. These flowers. What is this feeling? That was a phase spider. Better watch out, it might come back. It greeted me with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. Why trust this so-called priestess? Doubt she knows anything about the gake. I'd been robbed again. The bear's nose twitched nervously. Familiar sense, but no trace of the other bear. Not a good sign that they're bursting to life everywhere. It shivered in response to the deathly tomb and revealed its own home. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Her mind reeled. They would flay her alive. They would bleed her dry and tear her to pieces. Another vision consumed me. A memory, seen through the creature's soul-dead eyes. The music shifted. Still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. The crab stayed tense as it cowered in my shadow. Vita mortis cario. Rage slithered through him, hot and black. It squeezed me, suffocated me. Dialino. The rat's eyes followed me, shining. Its stomach grumbled. Dead goblins. Dead travellers. I can't see any way to disarm it. The boat creaked against its moorings, ready should I need it later. One wrong move and I'd have been a statue. Imprisoned for eternity. Mors tua vita mea. Volo non fugia. The lute twanged and the tiefling stopped singing. Saluna, the night white lady. There's something underneath here. The bear growled, hurt and afraid. He sized me up carefully, uncertain about my presence. I gave her a hard look. Never play a player. I told her to be calm. I was no threat, no challenge. The realization hit me. 
that stench wasn't the dead. I could sense that the hyena's very flesh was desecrated. My mind was one with Will's. A blood-red creature consumed my vision. Intactilis sum! Flee. I felt it cry. Vocomoras! I said he could be on his way as soon as I was paid. <laughs> Tracks. Five or six knolls heading north. Pursuing prey, I'd bet, realising he was not alone. The bear rose up and roared. He was ready to show that he wasn't beaten yet. The rat's nose twitched impatiently. Her teeth bit air as though it was flesh, but it didn't sate her hunger. Zevlor lowered his voice to an inaudible whisper. Risus abundat! Is this the underdog? Gods take me. Welcome to Joaquin's Rest. West, Baldur's Gate. East, Elturel. I asked to be compensated for my troubles. The spiders skittered about more nervous than before. His cries for mercy were cut short as the hag sliced into him, removing limb by painstaking limb. Disera. I didn't expect honesty. We're not exactly close. <gasps> Just then, I noticed my bags felt lighter than before. The creature quickly wormed its way into the undergrowth and vanished. This story is no prophecy. It is superstition. A lie devised to mask ignorance. Precis alia fero. She'd eaten. She'd feasted. And yet looking into her eyes, I could see it wasn't enough. She was still hungry. The owlbear recoiled with a shriek of pain, blinded and enraged. The bear's nostrils quivered as it took in the aftermath of the battle. It growled, soft and sad. As the pain muddled my thoughts, our minds became entangled. A familiar sensation. She too carried a parasite. I poked and prodded, but the lock held strong. This also missed. Well, it's too late to change now. But a sudden pulse of rage severed my connection to the parasite, expelling me from her mind. I'd vitam aeternum. Can you feel that? Something sucking the energy right out of me. Intelego. No trigger or handle, though. No way to open it. He now belonged to the circle. He would obey the sovereign. The corpse had nothing more to say to me. Broken bones. Must have fallen. The spell's power waned. The corpse fell still. The woman's dead lips curled into a snarl. But she said nothing. The crab rested in a trench of mud. It looked half asleep. A sword like this would certainly get Gale's attention. Resisto venenum! Arde! It says there's a cellar here somewhere. Let's take the good news and go. There'll be plenty of other trouble along the way. The goblin's already gone. We're settled on it. Rocks and rubble. So much for a way out. Incertus, pulcher, imperio. The corpse became quiet. It had nothing further to say. Quite. Now I really do have to get back to work. A lone cub isn't much of a threat. At ventus! I settled into the boat as it began to slip away from the shore. Stultissime! That wall's barely holding together. Unfortunately, they did. Brine. That's what they use for those... those parasites. <sighs> Where's Helia? Smoke. Something's burning. Ragslin remained composed. If he sensed my manipulations, he gave no sign. The corpse had nothing further to say to me. A war drum. One of those can summon fighters far and wide. Get back! The circle will fall into darkness if we don't intervene. I could not rest. How was it possible, staring at the wrong side of the stars, chittering the creature backed away? The bear sized me up, wary but not yet attacking. Seems to be stuck. The fallen bore Shah's sacred symbol on their armor and banners. Teexicror! The bird sat back in satisfaction, admiring his nest. The creatures clutched the pouch possessively. Was gold so precious to spiders? What, what was that? Obedeme. A memory, a gnome beneath her hooves. Chaos all around her. She wanted to run, but the drow's orders were absolute. I'd say the swamp is a breath of fresh air compared to the hag, but not really. Such fury. I do not envy the dragon's prey. I sensed the tadpole let loose a burst of magic, as if it repelled the hag. No, I told him I was protecting an innocent from him. Were you so ignorant of your lessons? It is a city, the most vulgar along the coast. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. Not an elf to it but rather an amulet of Saluna. I think Gale might want this. Dwergar corpses. What is this beast doing to them? Hore bellissimus! <gasps> Mundus vulticipi! I always knew I was destined for something great. 
I'll leave the details to Alondo. Copio Virtus Lichet! The dead woman's lips parted to steal a rattling lungful of air from the living. A clamour of noise and heat, exhaustion battling terror. <sighs> My mind was a canyon, and the words echoed from every crevasse, and I felt answers. She knew more about my condition. Hmm. This fairy ring isn't glowing like the rest. The crab sat in a dark corner of my bag, still damp from the beach. The creature responded, not in words, but memories. <coughs> this should burn going down. We'll raise the entire camp to the ground. It's exactly what they deserve. His gnarled fist gripped a weapon hilt. What kind of contraption is this? I sensed the expected satisfaction of successful battle. The corpse twitched in response to the spell. I said I'd rather know how he got caught. The fresco showed a powerful group of druids, gathered in Eldath's name. I was on sacred ground. Baldur's Gate. Well, the sooner we reach it, the better, I say. These symbols have to mean something. Good. Let's go. Extende! I said it was too late. My many comrades were coming. They should clear off. Flagra! Sharp. Deep. And still fresh. Ostende secretorum tuorum. It's back. They're trying to escape. Ah! The murals showed druid and beast fighting together to drive monsters from their land. The crab plunged into the darkness and hit the bottom of my bag with a wet thunk. That heart thumped all the harder. This time with rage. Yes, they would fear her. They would pay. Here lies Zevlor. He saved us when all hope seemed lost. Thank you, friend. The rat gestured angrily towards the chest, chittering angrily. It bit down on nothing but winced all the same. The growl turned into a roar of hurt and hatred. He wasn't done fighting, whether I was on his side or not. Which instantly passed as I heard a wet squelch. I dropped the lifeless tadpole. The myconid's heightened pitch revealed cruelty. It enjoyed the bloodshed and was thrilled by the prospect of more. Da mihi facta. Resisto venenum. His presence still lingered in my mind, softly urging me on. He's gone. Left this morning. Huh. Those people were enthralled. How did we break that mind flare's influence? Nocturnus. Bet this book of necromancy has some hefty magic in it. Gail, what do you think? My mind rushed into her head. I sensed confusion, urgency, a resolve to survive. Volo tore the pick from my brain with a violent jerk. My eye plopped to the ground. I took his hand. It was an innocent request after all. My mind rushed into her head. I sensed confusion, urgency, a resolve to survive. Drowcraft armor. No magic left though. Sun's too bright. The bear looked back in the direction of the goblin camp and growled. He licked his wounds dejectedly. Perure! <sighs> Don't stop singing. They snuffed out their own souls when they dealt with Zariel. Let's not get involved. The silent servant awaited its sovereign's orders. Ah! Es pridae me. Never making that mistake again. A new eye is not easy to come by. Shadow druids. This corger is not to be trusted. I've never seen a red moon before. These boots have clearly been enchanted with powerful magic. Do not trust anything here. Handy magic, that. Maybe it'll be of use to us. You heard them. More goblins could be on their way. The creature's inner song breathed hope into the myconid meld. Saluna's sigil beneath Shars. It's blasphemy. Suddenly I saw what she saw. Felt what she felt. Anger. Confusion. Resolve. Something didn't like that. Manus potentis paro. The injured man locked eyes with me. A familiar squirming churned in my head. I told him I was protecting a child from a dangerous adult. Vis medicatrix. Voco flagella. Gigans. Hiding in plain sight. You would submit to these vermin? Kaincha. It acknowledged me with a light snap of claws. Like a fond greeting, the dog tilted his head and whined softly. The wolf's fur bristled. He wanted to jump, wanted to bite. Volco Arvina! My heart sank. Two days. I wasn't sure if I had two hours. I needed a healer now, or who knows what that worm in my brain would do. Hideous trinket, lacking in function or taste. The corpse's eyes fluttered closed. The vision was simple. A stone altar to Lolf the knife upon it bloody with sacrifice. Morbidos. Oh, as if you didn't have enough parasites already. I couldn't tell much, aside from his obvious desire to be left alone. And with this geich lava curled up in my skull, no doubt pleased with itself, the echoes of the drumbeat faded to silence. Things look 
different. Ad vitam aeternam. I had to gather my party before I could set out on the boat. In darkest hour, a concord made, twixt harp and wild, against the shade. But she didn't move, keeping her eyes on the goblins. They wouldn't let her. No lock, no handle. How does it open? I was left with memories, not mine, but Will's. First a bloodbath, then a promise. Look at that beast. Seems almost too big to take flight. Vita excolator. A giant nest. Let's see what we can find. What happened? Was that the toadstools? I'm surprised she didn't cut us at the knees on the way out. We cannot trust her. The corpse had nothing further to say to me. Ad maiorum de gloriam. The creature in the wreckage was forcing them to attack me, controlling them like puppets. Obede me. Cantate! Uh, uh. Strange place for a button, especially one that doesn't work. A magical staff. Will this be of use, Gail? Slowly, her broken body started to calm, to stop its wild contortions. She was still. Tu es nihil! I deftly dropped the tadpole and crushed it under my heel. Ragslin's mind was clouded by doubt, surprised once more by a question he didn't expect. She gave a great yawn and settled back down to sleep. The hag's doing. It has to be. The corpse lay still. It would speak to me no more. The myconid soothed me with hums and whistles. Would have liked to know that from the start. Bit too late for that, though, isn't it? I know she was a goblin, but killing someone defenceless in a cage... Everyone's safe for now. Let's hope it stays that way. Ha! <laughs> Pulso! As our minds slipped together, I felt a hand on Asterion's chin, guiding him, controlling him. They don't look right. No, this isn't right! Suddenly, something convulsed inside me. My vision lurched sickeningly. I could feel the oar beating away inside my chest. A second heart that would herald either death or dominion. The owlbear's feathers ruffled defensively. <clears throat> Vocal potentia! First came ice, shivers from top to toe as our lips touched. Facio, voco, fere, teo, clodo, oculos. A prayer sheet. What's this symbol on it? Vero! Having pinned me to the floor, she hissed. Her pride washed through me. These creatures won't let go of us until we're dead. How are we supposed to cure that? The corpse gazed at me and awaited the next question. More importantly, where did it go? Da mihi facta. That hunter's out of the way. Astarian shouldn't have to look over his shoulder anymore. Pulcrior. A song began to form as our music wove together. The bard closed her eyes. Saluna. She who guides. It revealed its own home in reply. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. There's something etched into it. Mayrina, and then dropped to her knees. Let's see if they want to have their blood spilled. Oribus tenio lupum. It's huge. <laughs> the bear lay in quiet grief. Without Halcyn or the other bear, he was alone. His ears twitched as I spoke, but his eyes didn't shift from my tail. He saw me as a threat. The owl bear reared back before I could strike. A blur of talons lashed out. They wanted the tieflings out. They got their wish. The tadpole quivered. It seemed to be burrowing deeper in my mind, feasting on... on... what? The word escaped me. Inexpugnabilis! Voco nubes! This sensation. These flowers are absorbing all the magic in the air. Gela! Let her rot. The Absolute's allies deserve no better. Hardly a welcoming sight. Tenebra! Propria! Control panels melting, flesh pods spilled open. I sense magic. But where? I could feel the book's pull. I could feel its power. Huh. This goes very far down. We'll have to go in to see the bottom. I considered my kin, dead by my hand. The bird's feathers ruffled impatiently. She had places to be. You can't summon a dead ogre, it turns out. The corpse stirred in response to my spell. Veritas, credo, oculus. The glaive the druid's notebook mentioned. Its owner thought it was cursed. Lazelle is still back there. Should I just abandon her? Cackling, the hyena raised its head as if to be petted, but it intended to bite off my fingers. Her web missed me, and her jaws twitched in frustration. Imperote! I told him I'd had enough. Pay up, now. A dead drow. Hardly a welcoming sight. All memory and all future was lost. There were no parasites to cleanse, and no monsters to vanquish.
This place wasn't built for the living. What is this place? I said I could extort him if he wished. Teo Clodo Oculus! The pillar can't hold it. Too badly damaged. We're getting nowhere. Let's just go. Dead. They're only good for kindling now. Flowers as a light source. Necessity really is the mother of invention. As I neared the end of my tale, I felt his excitement turn to fear. Monstrous creatures. Her belly split like a rotten fruit, birthing a frenzy of claws and fangs. Fungal roots wove through my mind, seeking my true intent. A glassy black surface, reflecting my gaze back at me. My voice drew their attention. They were suspicious, then curious, and finally at rest. Hag can't have gone far. I saw him holding me by the throat. I saw him taking the amulet off my corpse. She'll tear me in two for touching her egg. That thing could swallow each of us whole. But it didn't lunge again. Instead, it clawed at the ground, glaring a challenge. These webs are everywhere. We'll have to keep an eye out for more. The goblins slunk backwards, afraid to take their eyes off me. We need to get out of here, now! Slowly, I tried to back away. <laughs> Humans, what did they expect? Resus abundat! Glyphs shifted gently before my eyes, always just out of focus. Then words started slipping into my mind. Te execror, Kitius. It was unnecessarily odd. A small, noisy pest with a bushy tail. Our gazes met and memories of last night's dream coursed through me. The goblin's corpse grunted and spasmed. I found a current of hope flowing through her thoughts. She believed we had a real chance. I said I wasn't like other Duagar. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can feel its aura. The dog whined. Why couldn't Master just sit down? It's damaged, but not beyond repair. That symbol in the blood. What does it mean? Hmm. In Kende! He handed me the scroll, and I read the words aloud. Are we really going to hunt a devil on their behalf? A mouse couldn't squeeze through those vines. I faced the prisoner, considered the tools at my disposal, and... <laughs> It's getting stronger. Precis alia fero. Over there, a shrine to Saluna, by Moon Maiden's grace. I saw her hand in my bags and the shame in her heart. How could I even think of harming something so beautiful, so pure? Goblins ahead, Evanesco. This is the spot Rugen marked. Doesn't look like much. I could see nothing in the darkness. Needs a key. A magic mirror. I'd read all about them, but never seen one up close before. Bocco aranie. No lock. How does this open? Expelote! The child stared past me as if I wasn't there. The dog's hackles raised. He wanted to be left alone with the corpse, it seemed. We might have made a mistake. Let's keep a close eye on Ethel if we see her again. The stone was warm to the touch. Its carved symbols pulsed with necromantic energy, keeping perfect time with my heart. I noticed something wrong with its mouth. The creature hissed at me revealing a badly chipped tooth. Broken. Shoddy work. Vermin. On the rooftops. Yes, I felt hate. And I deserve to be punished for it. Impero Mortus. No, it's a port city. One of the biggest on the Sword Coast. The tadpole. It was doing something. Taking something I'd never get back. Bocos Picai. The bear limped on his front leg. He growled helplessly, begging me to get him out. A key. Wonder what it opens. The stone was warm to the touch. Each carved symbol pulsed with magical energy, holding a rhythm like a heartbeat. Seems like the owner was quite the literary type. With a thunk, the armoured man collapsed, unconscious. The beast reeked of brimstone and offal. Every breath was thick with blood. Almost gagging, I muttered a quiet prayer to my god. The corpse awaited my questions. I bet Gale will want to take a look at this stuff. Huh. I think the crab stopped moving. Feels like something is weighing it down. They drooled. Their glittering eyes moved from me to the open door. The corpse let out an angry hiss of foul air, then was silent. Then, as one, they attacked. I don't care how desperate we are. Looting tombs is wrong. Those screams. Someone's trapped in that mirror. Dog-like, but too large and heavy to be scratches. And above all, they were bipedal. Frustrated, the door rattled. I saw the hag and myself. This plane is full of disturbing creatures. The book snapped closed. I had seen too much. Not that I understood what it meant. The corpse lay still, unaffected by the magic. Volo slowly brought the ice pick closer to my eye. The corpse's face contorts. 
It may be able to speak, but it will say nothing to me. This plane is a blister of corruption. I was blocked by a wall of stubborn determination. She wouldn't be controlled again. Cupio, Virtus, Lycet, Invoco te. A sharp pain shot through my arm as my collarbone dislocated. The chains held tight. A splinter of ice worked its way into my mind. I heard the drow's voice as if she were by my side. There was light here, in the tight space beneath the floor. Secret things that shone. The crab shrunk into its shell, claws giving a lethargic twitch. Crescatskientia! A Susa tree. Spells will be unreliable. Teeth flashed in my mind, dripping saliva and blood. Ludus non factum est! More of the same. Something large ran through here. Ludus non factum est! The corpse wheezed and grimaced as a magical echo of life flowed into it. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. Not a gnome to it, but rather... Incertus pulcher imperio! Dolor! The stone was infused with a strange heat. It threatened to lure me in. The bird chirped happily and skipped a little. She seemed to be remembering someone she was very fond of wherever they were. Fear and hope in that heart, as her eyes found mine. Help! Through music and vision, the Sovereign revealed the truth of the fungal creature before me. The kiss stretched on while I carefully slid off the ring. He was too weak still, but he couldn't truly rest until his master came home. The dog tilted his head and whined softly in recognition. And then the vision lurched, and I was looking through her eyes as a tadpole squirmed into her skull. Inexpugnabilis! The dead goblin was silent. Even magic could not coax more words from him. A cave beneath the tavern. I wonder how deep it runs. What's that? I told them if they wished to live, they should walk away. They scuttled towards me, drooling. Whoever built it, they've let it rot for ages. Tenebra! It seemed whatever had caused the damage was in there. His dark eyes stared at me, waiting for this danger to be banished. I saw drow and goblins restraining her. A mind flayer reaching out, a human man awaited me, a spell crackling at his fingertips. A port city, no? Famed along the entire Sword Coast. Dog-like, but too large and heavy to be this dog's. And above all, they were bipedal. Ugh, fresh goblin stench. They're close. They're trying to escape again! The telescope pointed straight ahead. Must have been fishing when these monsters came. Bad luck. For a split second, I saw a swirl of tainted magic. Then his defences dropped like a portcullis. Dum vita est, spes est. I made it quick. The last sad chirp echoed through the cave. Then there was silence. First came ice, shivers from top to toe as our lips touched. Someone, something, is calling to me. But what? I was swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sang many voices, the harmony of an entire collective. Flagilo! Were her intentions sincere? I watched closely for signs of deceit. Diminue! The dead woman stayed silent. She had nothing more to say to the living. We shattered its hold on those people. How is that possible? Finely aged wine. Don't mind if I do. But you heard them. More goblins could be on their way. Mortum tuum sum. A lot of rotten food and old blood. Was this a sacrifice or a party gone wrong? The owlbear cub squawked shrilly, hungrily. Oh, that stench. Body must have been here a good while. Teleported right into the Underdark. Lovely. I feel a presence here. The patron god of this place. Tenebra. Fungal roots wove through my mind, poking me, warning me. My pack went still. I wonder what the crab's up to. The surge of holy power was rebuked, knocking me back. Dialino! The bear's growl turned into a roar as he rose up, emboldened, ready to show he wasn't beaten yet. For a brief moment, all I felt was a heavy silence. Diore! <clears throat> I could listen to this forever. But they couldn't stop me. All I had to do was strike. Lazel held my gaze, searching for signs of weakness. Tormentum! Look where city be placket. This debate's over. Everyone's going to make their own choices, no matter what's said. It wasn't uncommon for my brethren to fight dark forces in our lands, but this looked like something different. I felt crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoiled. It couldn't let people through. Not again. The fresco showed some druids blessing a damp cave. 
a weak ritual for a weak goddess. The kiss stretched on as I fumbled to get hold of the ring. Resisto ignem! At least the cub has a fighting chance now. Yes, it's a good thing we were here. Cave curculum! Knolls could spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. Hmm, perhaps something's missing. The corpse raised its head, staring at me. The flames fell away, a mere illusion. I was surrounded by the Feywild again, a gleam with revelry. I recalled an old Zentarim proverb coined by their founder. The crab was curled in its shell, clinging tightly to its home. We have made an ally from an enemy. Quite judicious. Its delicate harmonies turned to scrapes and scratches. The dog whined softly, as if in recognition. Apparently, the concept of freedom was new to them. Someone doesn't sound happy. Hmm. I'm still missing the Sousa bark. The bark is in place. Now for a greatsword, dagger or sickle. Te ad stringo linguam! Corruptus! My skull ached before I could take a step, and I was the creature. I saw the tieflings through the bars of her cage. I felt her irritation and indignity. I saw other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. His large eyes grew larger as the adult owlbear failed to respond. I... never mind. Let's settle in, shall we? Her fingers were warm against my cheek, softer than I expected. A quiet peace settled in my heart. Ad maiorem de gloriam. <gasps> she froze, her muscles tensed with alarm. A glistening tadpole emerged, slithering up past a sightless eyeball. No, I've seen eyes like theirs before. Thralls. Maleos! I would rather fall on my blade than become a geek. Realisation dawned. He was describing how to open something. A door? More survivors. They're trying to dig somebody out of the wreckage. Ah, Perry! The bird chirped his disagreement and resolutely pushed the coin to the right. I dropped the book and felt better the second it hit the ground. That was not what I expected to see today. Nor was there rest. She took fully of me, hour after hour, until I had no sweat or soul left to give. As its influence waned, they clutched their heads, blinking in confusion. I told the kid he wasn't fooling anyone. Why'd he take the amulet? Hmm. Ugh, terrible aftertaste. Maybe if it was stuck in a bit of brine. Darkest one. Moonrise. They meant nothing to me. Enough stories for one day in any case. <sighs> I said he owed me nothing. No sound escaped my lips but a faint gurgling. The creature lay twisted on the ground, stirring as magic coursed through it. The Dwergar's raft wobbled on the lake's murky waters. The bear growled angrily, pushing against the bars with bloody paws. He wanted out. The man's smile bent downward, and his thoughts became mine. Too well made for goblins. But what is it? Embrace the night song and be sworn to eternal shadow. <sighs> Quite the welcome, the tadpole jolted deep within my brain. This was it. A single word pervaded my consciousness. Soon, I could feel the darkness radiating from the book. It was delicious. A sweet melody played above the waves, beckoning. Stabilio! When I turned back, he was gone. Again, I threw the crab in the bottom of my bag. It attempted to swim, mystified by the lack of water. The corpse made a wet, gurgling sound as the magic waned. These little markings look like goblins and gnolls. Right in our path. Then she plopped her head back down, already dreaming of a quiet home and glorious sleep. Tempestus! Detono! My ring. It lit up. Must be resonating here. Omnia mutantor! Deep in the chaos of her mind, Something responded to my command. A tadpole, sweat and deep fire. Singing stone and shapes waiting within. Viam sapientiae. The flakes squelched the fires. The dagger was unchanged. <sighs> Nir's eyes snapped from the corpses to me. His mind was a cold claw in my head, digging for memories. Warped wood and loose joints, likely done by assembly in some grim workhouse. She was lying. Baldur's Gate. Odd name for a crash. <sighs> he didn't speak his next words, yet they still rattled my skull from within. Will responded by grabbing the tongs and yanking the nail from the prisoner's thumb. The hyena moaned softly as its body contorted, ribs cracking and flesh tearing. Tim asks, known to cause confusion. Best not get too close. Spike gave Will a wide grin. 
<sighs> the creature's song rumbled within me, neither warm nor welcoming. The talons sliced through thin air where I just stood. The owlbear shrieked in outrage. The sheep's nostrils twitched with apprehension as it sniffed the air around me. Then the sovereign droned a new melody, cautious but welcoming. More of the Mind Flayer's pets. Odd necklace. Might sell for a few coppers. Pretty. But it doesn't do much. Aggression. Someone cut these men to pieces. I doubt they had time to scream. Gake parasites thrive in this secretion. Disgusting. I said I sought healing. Where was this camp? Ignis! This must have belonged to Lenore's dog. Definitely magical, too. People up ahead. Something's wrong. A Salunite shrine over there. Left to rot by the looks of it. Good. A single ear twitch was the bear's only acknowledgement of me. She needed her sleep. Her eyes widened at my tail as she listened intently. He produced the ice pick, wiped it on his cuff, and held it to my eye. Intelego. Tsva. Best to watch my step. I said the wrecked ship was full of monsters. They'd better run. <coughs> Erdlen's teat. That's nasty. I said I'd be taking my reward now. She sniffed the air hungrily as I approached, then prepared to strike. The bear stared at me, unbelieving, then growled. I could leave if I didn't like it. This medicatrix. With a last warning flash of teeth, she settled back down. Looks like that idol is enchanted. Might be worth getting a hold of for Gale. This has the markings of hag magic. There's a name. Marina. Where do you think those dragons went? The scene showed druids blessing the grove for Mother Peace, a term for the blessed goddess Eldath. There's still life left in this old thing. Dolor. I assured him I was only trying to protect one of my own. <sighs> Knolls could spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. What's that? Veniet me! The warning lowered into an admonishment reserved for foolish cubs. Cold metal pressed against the skin beneath my brow and then... Aqua pura. Something here is disturbing the weave. Magic might be unreliable. Gay aren't the only abominations here, it seems. Webs, all the way down. Every breath, every blink proved exhausting. A long day awaited me. The tadpole slipped out of its dead host and disappeared into the undergrowth. I told him to wait. What was he doing here in the first place? The gnome snapped his fingers. Bright lights and thunder, walls falling, crushing. Both spiders recoiled at the sound of my clapping, afraid and uncertain. The dog whimpered and nuzzled my hand as if to urge me on. <sighs> then came fire, as her fingers raced up and down my back, seeking more. He seemed almost protective of the corpse. Adventus! <sighs> Let's talk later in camp. Might be other survivors. Dami hi facta, non compos mentis. Ragslin's mind resisted my penetration. He spoke his first question. A god's idol has to have some magic lingering in it. Your sort of thing, Gale? <clears throat> then a wheeze of concern. He sensed something in me. Or rather, something I carried. <clears throat> the corpse's mouth puckered angrily. It refused to speak to me. Pallid amors! Beautiful. And terrifying. The corpse turned to look at me, and its mouth fell open. Not the most ideal outcome. But I'm not falling on anyone's sword yet. The spell's magic was spent. The corpse would say no more. Allez, me! Obede, me! The persistent music coaxed me forward. The sovereign expected me. Invocote! Let it listen. I dream of all the ways to make this power mine. For someone who just heard we're all beasties in waiting, she reacted... Well? Ah! Oribus <sighs> tenio lupum. Well done. The world's better off without it. The squirrel lunged at my foot and bit it. Timmy! The druids must have turned to the harpers for help. Unusual for such a territorial group. And saw an owl bear cub. Ah! Where is she gone, I wonder? She severed the connection and prepared to attack. My fingers searched but found no bag. Had it been a trick of the light? <coughs> <coughs> This tastes like mouldy bellbuck. Cantote! And just like that, it's gone. The creature appeared again. Red skin, twisting horns, and wings stretching wide behind it. Invenium viam. More where this came from. Something's controlling them. I can feel it. Faint, but alive. I remembered stories of Zastam, a powerful lich and fae who made deals with dark gods. 
weapon blueprints that use Susa bark. Rare find. Nor was there rest. I took fully of her until I drained her of all ecstasy. The corpse awaited my questions. Lux in tenebra. They're just common folk. Have some sympathy. Veni et you for me! The magic was old and wavering, but it was essentially an expensive lock, hiding some secret. I disagree. Wasn't very noble of us, was it? I don't want to make a habit of grave robbing. A flash of anger pulsed across my brain, and I felt cold metal at my throat. Then I came back to myself. She was waiting, I realised. Waiting until they dragged the prisoner away. Waiting until she could take a bite. With a jolt, I recognised the crest she bore. The winged serpent of the Zahentarim. Not sure, but we'd better find out. Kudo! Looks like the ritual worked. The whole grove is walled in. The corpse stirred. It was ready to speak. Vivat crescat floriat! The owl bear bellowed in surprise, glaring at me accusingly. Saluna's symbol. In the dark. Something's off. Either way, I doubt we've seen the end of this. Let's move on. I followed the squirrel's gaze to a pair of clumsy, ugly feet. My own. On her territory. Angry trills and tremors shook my skull. Cries of anguish to its mycelic god. How could I have been caught off guard on the nautiloid? What was my mistake? Then he let out a feral little squawk and started eating her. I backed away, speechless. I saw the owl bear's claws sprout. It was ready to kill. The boar stared with beady, panicked eyes. Then it bolted off. Hells! I'd pointed her right at the tieflings. I needed a plan, and quick. He looked over at the stone door and trampled impatiently. His master had promised a companion. I lurched forward, into a body trapped in darkness. And yet, I felt calm. At home, even. Raphael said he wouldn't deal with us right now anyway. We have time to figure it out. My head felt like it was about to burst. The memory consumed my mind, corrupting the trance. I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod. Darkness cleared to reveal a face. Mine. Tefiteo! <sighs> Suddenly, I was him. I was hauled into a great storm with, as its eye, an orb beating with malevolence. My tadpole wriggled, contented as the knoll tore at her own throat. How does this pastry taste worse the second time? They turned their attention to me, unleashing a torrent of high-pitched insults before departing. In te! No matter what the voice said, I was meat. Everyone was meat. Let's put the question to bed for now. Time to carry on. I can't work without a blueprint. Maybe, but it's a city, and any city will have healers. My anger was clarifying, pure and bright. It burned away my doubts. I said I had no such plans. I saw the hag. She walked through the door, its form shimmering. The corpse wheezed, unable to speak. The rat hissed and scurried away. Ugh! Our minds brushed against one another, but were swiftly parted. The flames cooled, dispelled, as the image I knew emerged again. Nature's sublime beauty. After you. Precis alia ferro! Glecius! Can't change what's already done. Let's go. Her eyes went wide. She nodded nervously and turned away. The Sousa trees native to the Underdark, if my teachings were correct. The fog lifted and a low growl bubbled from the back of her throat. <sighs> In savage lands, a guiding light that faithful need not fear the night. <laughs> Harp and wild. I recalled stories of an alliance between druids and the harpers. Could this have been it? Resisto ignem! The stone was warm to the touch. Energy radiated from the statue, calling to the surrounding shadows. Hmm. There's a spell that lets you teleport from tree to tree. This magic looks similar. The bear's nose twitched. She was up and gulping down the fish in an instant. There's only one place I'm finding a Sousa tree. The Underdark. We need to get out of here before it's our turn. Indeed. These creatures are mightier than they look. This must be where the gnolls attacked. More zanimai. I felt this was a purge unlike any I'd ever seen. A sacred cleansing of the land. It's beautiful. This necklace's sigil was also in the cave. The harpers have been unusually active here. I was swallowed by a chorus of frenzied music. Through one creature sang many voices. 
the harmony of a Myconid collective. <sighs> this cowl's definitely enchanted. Gail could use this. Ad lapidem! I'll be there soon, my lady. <coughs> Moradin's bloody beard. I'm not waiting around for that to happen to us. The corpse stared at me, his eyes full of hatred. Another mystery. The tadpole writhed. My mind suddenly reeled as if bitten. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. No, it's a good thing this place is remote. I don't want to become known as a grave robber. Might fit that chest. That song. The forest rose with claw and tooth to tear the darkness from its roots. My brain screamed in agony, as if my skull had contracted. The creature spoke in my mind. They are mine. I don't regret it. I hope someone would do the same for me. Detono! His brow furrowed. Incomprehensible squiggles surrounded a crude sketch. A bear disemboweling a clutch of tieflings. <laughs> Tiskva! This tart is disgusting! One by one, the spiders retreated to the rear of the crevice, lulled by my murmurs. His ears twitched as he lowered his head, inviting me to pet him. I explained there were traces of decaying magic within him, likely the cause of his disease. Tempestus! Veritas credo oculos in certus pulcher imperio. In the cave, anxious hearts throbbing, ready to burst, ready to gorge on. The voice said they were meat. The bear extended her snout to sniff at me, then lunged. Wherever we are, it's falling apart. The creature stood still, ignoring me. These melodies. I warned the tieflings this creature was dangerous. Leave it to me. The parasite was quiet. I felt no bond with the creature. As its influence waned, my assailants lowered their weapons, blinking in confusion. An owlbear egg. These are supposed to be worth a fortune. Looks like we're in Eltergard. Some distance from the city of Baldur's Gate. The forge at the blacksmith's house should do. This Halsin has been studying the tadpole. Releasing a feral little goblin into the wild. What could go wrong? It's hopeless. Sylvanus's will holds these vines in place. The tadpole squirmed with glee. It was clearing the way for something deep inside, something that wasn't me. Eactote. The bear hardly reacted to me and kept staring at the ground. Pain shot through my body as the needle snagged on my optic nerve. A sigil of the harpers. Odd for their kind to misplace this. The corpse lay still, almost peaceful. I could ask it no more. Then I saw visions. Dark dwarves, Dwergar, chopping myconid remains with their axes. Arde! Tight fit. I won't be getting back in that way. Fungal roots wove through my mind, seeking my true intent. Suspicion flooded Ragslin's mind. My brain howled as I forced a final query into his throat. <gasps> the bird hesitated for a second, then pushed the coin away. Well, that was pathetic. Imperote! Draw Ragslin's mouth twitched, but he spoke no more. Cum mortuus in lingua mortua. Click. Hells, I wouldn't want to get hit by that. Resisto mortem. The tiefling could no longer speak. If only I knew where to find some. Obsidian tattoos covered this figure of Shah. Her lips were pursed, as if awaiting a kiss. The tadpole jolted deep within my brain. This was it. A single word pervaded my consciousness. Soon. Ameluum's tentacles fluttered in what seemed to be the Mind Flayer's approximation of a smile. Our minds melted into one. The deep Rothay's panic hit me like a wave. She needed to run. A Cambion. I was sure of it. Wings spread wide, long tail curled behind. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. Not a dwarf to it, but rather... What are those? Something's burrowed in there. Something big. I threw the owlbear's strike off balance. It shrieked, feathers ruffled. Did we just place our faith in a goblin? This thing must be warping our minds already. The crab was on guard the moment I approached. I could leave now, or step closer and die. Stay out of my head! The sovereign's inner music had been twisted by jealousy and hatred. Think I found something. Our minds connected, and I drowned in Lazelle's deep longing. I saw a Githyanki woman, pale as death, her face contorted by desire. <clears throat> we'll do a lot more than that. You can get anything in the city. Voconubes! Tap, tap, stab. The book saw me in my entirety and found me unworthy. I'd rather not discuss what happened next. The tadpole, it was doing something, taking something I'd never get back. 
You'd have to be a fool to pick a fight with that lot. Best to keep away for now. Blessings of the Moon Maiden. Praise her. Sine metu. A dizzying flash of fury. Suddenly its beak ached to rend, yearned for blood and soft belly flesh. I was powerless against such primal rage. She expelled me from her mind, intending to devour me. She was still ravenous, her mind a hungry pit. The flesh of her pack hadn't been enough to satisfy her. Lucky those bandits valued their own hides over their loot. Vincere est vivere! Her mind entered mine, a splinter of ice piercing my memories. Intactile sum! The Dwergar were dead. The ones who'd hit her and whipped her, she'd killed them. The Sovereign gifted me a vision. A stone door creaking open to reveal glowing light. Confucio! The dead goblin would speak no more. I took my leave. Our minds melted into one. Her anxiety engulfed me once more. She needed to flee. Iretio inspira! It was furious. Rage blazed within it. Tear, hunt, kill. Marqueske! Tibido penas! Tibido penas! Not useful at the moment. And look at that statue. Hey! What's the matter with you? You could feed an army with an egg that size. If you found an intact one, I said the kid was a thief and a disgrace to his kin. The chains held tight. A violent vision gripped me. Dwergar, dark dwarves, chopping myconid remains. What is this place? I closed my eyes, but struggled to fall into my trance. It should have been easy as breathing. That chair leg could make for a fine weapon. And awaited my first question. Chests unlocked. My prayers are answered. A cake ship. Disgusting. She flinched. Eyes widening in alarm. She licked her chops, tongue running over old scars. That statue. Seems they worshipped some kind of scholar. For a moment, my throat seemed to fill with warm blood, spilling into me from a living vessel. Anticipation of the feast. I felt Raglan's suspicions. He'd never have asked about his master. I remained in control. Barely. Free. For now. Oribus tenio lupum. Mellow brown eyes regarded me lazily before the beast returned her gaze to her master. Wyvern poison is as deadly as she said. Better be careful. The Underdark. A foolish place to hide contraband, even for a zent. Loque sitibi plucket. The corpse had answered all the questions it could. It fell silent. Looks like some kind of magical contraption. Now to get it to work. The eye stared, unblinking. Just a dark mirror once more. Volkovinei! The flames sputtered away. The dagger was mine for the taking. Broken. Must have been here a while. The druids drove monsters from this land once, but their power had long since waned. Baldur's Gate. The jewel of the coast. And as close to a home as I've got. Resurges. Otherworldly heat pulsed from the statue. The darkness within called to my wicked heart. Will flushed with emotion. Desire. Grief. Guilt. And desperation. I can't tell if this is a temple or a library. And then the voice, bringing order. Eating this meat was forbidden, but it would lead her to a feast. With a scornful flick of her tail, the squirrel scampered away. <coughs> the bird hopped about a small pile of trinkets, pushing a coin around assessing the best placement for it. A heavy silence settled in my heart as I stared at the grave. I'd survived this far. There was no chance I'd give up now. <sighs> Vlaketh tests me. To place Shah's new moon above Saluna is righteous, but strange. In ficio sine metu. I choked on black smoke as the hobgoblin screeched his incantation. It's loose. One good push away from tumbling. Tonitros! My kin wield their spears formidably. It would be foolish to provoke battle with them now. Ha <laughs> ha! Expensive imports, no doubt. A shame they've wilted. A shame they've wilted. These must have cost a fortune. Take Euro. What the hell's... Get back! The boar strutted proudly, head held high. He was glad to be alive. They chittered to each other, eyeing me dubiously. Thick stone and heavy dark. <sighs> Fire, deep and wide and cold. Blessings from the Moon Maiden. And bearing the same symbol as that chest. They scuttled towards me, drooling. Images flashed. A man cowered, a bag open at his feet, gold coins spilled onto the floor. Talons tense to strike, beak aching to rend. The cub wanted me gone. It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. 
not a duogar to it, but rather... Voco Arvina! The well didn't look too deep, and the old bucket rope felt strong enough. This seems as good a place as any to make camp. Where there are cities, there are healers. And where there are healers, there is hope. Gone. Why would they chase a runt like you? The battered man hung slack from his chains, barely breathing. Locked to keep the evil in or the prying eyes out. Let's see. I'm not sure those things qualify as people. Odd. The spell's power waned. The corpse fell still. Protecting Astarian was the right thing to do. Let's move on. They watched me with great interest. Their drool puddled on the floor. The corpse jerked alive as the magic did its work. I landed a swift strike against her skull. She yelped, then went completely silent. I strained against the webbing and it snapped. Strand by strand, I did it. Invisibilis. The smell of rot assaulted my senses as the illusion vanished. Then it released as I was thrust back into my own head. <laughs> The foul-tempered rodent hissed at me and scurried away. Extende! Vita mortis cario! Then the rage subsided. I was in control. Good. Glad to hear we're all on the same side. All memory and all future was lost. There were no parasites to cleanse and no monsters to vanquish. He glanced at the stone door, then back towards the floor, whimpering. Another bear who'd left with his master. As the crab buried into the mud, it flung something metallic out of the earth. The squirrel chittered angrily at me again before flouncing away. I saw dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spread through the earth. Their minds are just gone. The prisoner smiled through the pain, then spat in my direction. The owlbear's talons raked the ground but did not attack. <coughs> I haven't the faintest idea. Disgusting. I'll be damned if that's in store for us. The bird fluttered about frantically, looking for his missing treasure. Secluded. Good. Don't want any visitors. <gasps> Looks like all those moon plates can be turned. Gloomy place to build a fort. Pincers pierced my flesh. Their chitters became giggles. The intruder was punished. Kudo! Nature might have provided for it. Too late now. The liquid mist, splattering uselessly upon the ground. Fulgore! Stratch! Hook horrors! <sighs> no one's coming. The deal is done. Ah, cries for help. I must be home. I saw nothing unusual in Lazel's demeanour. I realised he was casting detect thoughts. The mirror glinted in the light. The screams from within, now silent. Deep no make. The design is anything but... What was this fort? The boar basked in the pool, relishing the calming effects of the water. I told him I wanted nothing but a passing thank you. Reality dawned. I'd been outsmarted by an ogre. I saw the shadowed outline of a figure. Veritas, credo, oculos! The bear whined softly, its ears drooping. I realised he was waiting, hopelessly. Oof! I bet he broke his nose. Friendly place. His eyes darted back and forth as he sniffed the air. He couldn't see them anymore, but he could smell them. Many, many strangers. Hmm. Not a good idea. For the best, I guess. Kitius. <gasps> the bear lazily lifted her head and sniffed the air, then promptly went back to sleep. Indeed. Isn't it delightful? Finely aged wine. Don't mind if I do. Crackling flame and music. If they're celebrating, I'm not sure I want to know why. I noticed that she was trembling. The tears streaming down her cheeks were indeed real. Te fideo. The woman sighed, a tear rolling down her cheek. Better take a closer look. Some beast or beasts I did not recognise. Vlacketh's crown, gone again. And with a quiet, resigned huff, she settled back down. The corpse had no more answers to give. And I felt answers. She knew more about my condition. As the life faded from her eyes, the knoll within her died too, stillborn. Feels like there's magic in every thread of this cowl. Something for Gale, certainly. These wounds are still fresh. That smell. Something died in here. Blinded, I'd be in breach of my contract. My soul would be Mizora's for good. The goblins cheered and raised their cups, all irony lost on them. My parasite burned in concert with Will's. Paralyzing rage. 
and a hunger for answers. Clausus, faccio, voco, fere. The crab hit the bottom of the bag and immediately retreated into its shell. These boots have clearly been enchanted with powerful magic. I think Gale might be interested. Just some mental fog that needed clearing. Now they'll see reason. Seems as though the Absolute's attracting followers from all kinds of places. Mind Flayer's dead. The imps killed it. Cupio, Vertus, Lychet. Suddenly I saw what she saw. Felt what she felt. Distrust. Hostility. Because I was Gith. Resisto Achidum. Fear rushed through me as the door shook at the memory of the hag's smile. Better keep an eye out for more. The prisoner howled, and the stench of charred flesh filled the room. Huh. Where's Gale? The dog growled at me while standing by a dead man. Doubt clouded Ragslin's skull. Might he suspect the truth? I navigated carefully. With Ragslin's voice, I asked, Ugh. Nocturnus. Mundus Volticipi. Never seen that before. <sighs> Tight fit. I barely got through. Buried deep. A tadpole struggled to assert control against the ravenous chaos of her mind. They hesitated, abdomens quivering in confusion. The stone was warm to the touch. Negative energy jumped to meet my fingertips. The sheep wiggled its woolly haunches as it ambled away from me. A perfect hit. The wound healed instantly, ejecting the broken spear with a wet pop. Yes. My canids are more powerful than you realize. Quad dico fake. The squirrel looked up at me, eyes wide, heart thundering. I tried to read her mind. Never mind their history. Let's see if they have a healer. She ruffled her feathers and chirped harshly, mimicking a goblin's cry. Oh, that smell. Is that milk? Good call. Looks like that's going to bruise. The drow could no longer be compelled to speak. A prayer sheet. With the same symbol as the one on the chest. These gith are formidable, but not infallible. We can take them in battle, should it come to that. Esurio! I saw a vision. My lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign was threatening me. Huh. A chest of transformation. Tempora montantur! She wouldn't be conning anyone else. I demanded she hand over the box. Resisto frigus! Amicus animalis! Yes. I don't care how desperate we are. Looting tombs is wrong. The skill of a dragon rider. Breathtaking. It needed sustenance to survive, and with my very body, I could provide. I hesitated. Better to gather the whole party first. Nine hells take me! No, never again! Fiat voluntas dei! Barrel stalks, full of poison. And under myconid control, no doubt. From the far distance, I heard a blast of goblin voices. More owl bear eggs. Already hatched. No point in taking these. His eyes rolled, and instinct drove him to rear away. An illness? No. A parasite. I felt crushing waves of fear as a presence within the door recoiled. It couldn't let people through. Not again. Those mushrooms have a curious symmetry. Pain exploded in my eye. Hmm. What was that? I recognised the dragon as the mount of a Githyanki knight. Perhaps they'd been tracking the ship. Let the goblins kill them. At least they'll enjoy it. Rizum teniatis! <coughs> I lay bleeding as she leaned over me, a smile on her face. Timmy! A dragon. Gods preserve me. Invocate! Ugh, pathetic. Dead. Good. They unleashed a torrent of high-pitched insults in my direction before departing. The raft beckoned me aboard. His growl was low. A warning to leave him be. <coughs> These fungal spores are everywhere. Maleus! We're not agreeing on this. It's your brain. Use it as you like. Let's move on. I saw the hag, eyes bright with glee as she set fire to the door. The fair's rest was the energy of the Underdark. The Myconid might die if isolated from it. I let the tadpole drop, but couldn't bring myself to lift my foot. Te curo. Manos potentes paro! As I drained the bottle, a comforting warmth enveloped me, like an old, much-loved blanket. When I turned back, the child had vanished. I saw a frothing dwergar, axe drawn, crazed by bloodlust, bearing down on a young myconid. The owlbear shrieked and reared up, talons flashing. The pig hissed, baring its teeth. His eyes were glassy and he was sweating profusely, absolutely terrified and pretending all was well. Abuno disque omnes. Wherever they are, it was a fine hunt. Tore! His lips closed. The body was still. The spell was done. The bird fluttered about frantically, looking for his missing treasure. Maybe not. 
Better stay back. One strike could be lethal. I didn't mean to tease him. I asked how those goblins caught him. As I read the cover, The Necromancy of Thay, I could almost hear a voice. I just had to open the book and it would be mine forever. I faced the prisoner, considered the tools at my disposal, and the ox's nostrils flared. She could almost smell the fresh grass. Dissolve! I closed my fist as tight as possible. Suddenly I felt the most intense sorrow and regret. And visions consumed me once more. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. For the best, the gig earned its fate. Bodies everywhere. Accident or sabotage. The bear stamped a paw and pointed off in the distance. There, home. Non-fit injura. I squinted at the distant object, trying to make out further details. <coughs> I heard what came next before I saw it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body started to twist and undulate. The frightened myconid circle conjured mildewed vines. They encircled and transformed the Dwergar. Never seen anything like these. A brain in a jar. They'll be tough to fight, but not impossible to beat. The Mind Flayer's corpse twitched, then collapsed again. It could speak no more. Bet this idol has a bit of divine spark left. Something Gale can use. Tecuro. Back in the hag's lair. Good thing she's dead. True enough. City's got pubs though, doesn't it? Weapon blueprints. Looks like this Sousa bark might come in handy. The bear snorted and clacked her teeth in agitation, bearing fangs as long as my finger. The ring changed colour. I wonder why. First druid and now last druid. Thanks to me. Quadikosake, Time. Then the rage subdued. I was in control. Odd. Someone's cut a notch in the tree there. I opened the book where I'd left off, and the voices returned, chiding me for my indecision. How did it do that? The goblin's nostrils flared, as if trying to judge my intent through smell alone. We can butt heads later. Let's go. That's quite an egg. Schio di dici pecto, te absolvo! Again, a vision came to me. A memory, seen through the creature's soul-dead eyes. I wonder what that did. He seemed ordinary. A little careworn, but little else. That cage won't last! <sighs> what a horrid sight that was. The dog's hackles raised as its growls loudened. Tomorrow, I would fight harder than ever before. The gestures meant nothing to me. Some sort of spell that I didn't recognise. I noticed the tiefling twitch. He was about to erupt. Ragslin remained ignorant to my presence in his mind murk. I chose my next question. I said he took the words out of my mouth. The corpse shivered to one life. Her mind was willingly led. Restlessness peaking as a frantic urge to run. Crescascientia! Wyvern poison? That's worth a pretty penny on the black market. I am free. Never to be captured again. More! The wolf's fur ruffled in annoyance. He wanted me to leave. There were too many people here. I wonder what happened to that drow. I heard what came next before I saw it. The sharp snapping of bones and a yelp of pain as her body started to twist and undulate. Demonic creatures. They're like vermin. That's putting it mildly. Etacaps. Creatures with heavy claws and gaping mouths appeared. We pushed off with a heaving grunt and rode into darkness. The frightened myconid circle conjured mildewed vines. They encircled and transformed the Dwergar. Intelligente pauca! Resisto mortem! <gasps> <laughs> Resurges. Makeske! The stone was warm to the touch. Each carved symbol pulsed with magical energy, holding a rhythm like a heartbeat. Hardly. We earned this. The ox stared at me wearily, before dipping its head to munch on some dry grass. A lucky escape. Judging by how they fought, those things weren't happy with our looting. Suddenly I saw what she saw, felt what she felt. Confusion. Resolve and a hint of gratitude. I've never heard something so beautiful. Mother of lusts, gone again. Useful little mushrooms. This is a swift way to the Underdark. The corpse's mouth wrenched into a hateful twist. It refused to speak. Non fit injura. Another vision. I looked back into the darkness of the pod aboard the Nautiloid. He breathed deep, <sighs> seeming to relish in the new sense I brought with me. Huh? It's a city. And the sooner we reach it, the better. Silentium. 
but instead I found myself straining, then smiling as it wriggled freely in my hand. The silent servant awaited its sovereign's orders. I gasped. I'd never threaten a child, even one that had stolen my friend's locket. I tasted brimstone. The stench of withered flesh and dark steel burned my nose like acid. An image of the Mind Flayer I'd encountered reached out to her from my memories. It's the most important city in this part of Faerun. And it's home. I watched through the creature's eyes. It cursed the starborn slaves. <coughs> Whatever it is, the Absolute has a powerful hold over them. I watched her blink, process this and paw the ground in agitation. The other spider echoed her, tapping his claws gleefully. Hostia Monera! A sorrowful note echoed in my skull when I touched the stone. The keening sound cut short, as if strangled. The dog looked from me to his owner with a soft whine. He did not move from the corpse. Visions consumed me once more. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high. The priestess is slain. And the horde is weaker for it. In Commodom! I said us tieflings stick together, and we outnumbered him. Unfortunately, the spiders chose that moment to attack. Esurio! I said it was dangerous to travel without supplies. The girl winked at me and turned away. In expugnabilis! Signum arcanum! I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. Contact. He fell to the ground, unconscious. Agreed then. Let's keep our distance. Agilius! Vocomuras! Chewy, bitter, putrid. Just like Mum used to make. But I couldn't do it. The creature was too precious, too beautiful. I recognised the scourge. This man was a follower of Leviatar, goddess of pain. At least the boat's an option if there's no safer routes forward. The creature spoke in visions. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders. Silver blades held high. Veritas credo oculos! Something about the gesture struck me as acceptance of a master never waking up. The rat chittered at the chest, wincing with its broken tooth. Sphira mortis! This whole place reeks of necromancy. Scio didici pecto! The person they were trying to save, it was the creature from the ship. Still alive, but wounded. Ah! This thing won't yield its contents easily. Not much magic left, though. Sun's too bright. Deep claw marks. Whole parts bitten off. A knoll did this. The tadpole quivered. It seemed to be burrowing deeper in my mind, feasting on... on... what? The word escaped me. Imperotibi! The parasite was quiet. I felt no bond with the creature. I felt her breath on my neck, her fingers running down my spine, and then... it was over. Then it settled. We took a chance for Marina. It was the right call even if it went wrong. Mors animae. Auntie Ethel nodded along to my tail, her face creased with concern. Baldur's Gate? Is that a portal? There's more back here. Looks quiet. Dead. Rizum teniatis. The gith raised their weapons. No, the teachings are clear. It is impossible. Vokoglakias. Seems like nature's provided a shortcut. Longing welled from a deep place in their hearts. Their gazes drifted to the open door. He was ready to show he wasn't beaten yet. I felt movement behind me and turned. Where did it go now? Our minds parted again, leaving my skull throbbing. The choir faded. A single melody rose above the others, brassy and commanding. Rebirth was sloughing flesh. A new skull housing cold, sharp intellect. This is a bad idea. Sicut catus. I spotted a man crouching between the shelves, just as he spotted me. Her faith flooded into me, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestled within that mania, secure, hidden. The corpse fell silent, unable to answer. Well, if there's a solution, it isn't here. We'd better get moving. Brains? The lightest touch of hope brushed my mind as the presence within retreated. Diure te execror. But the new moon represents Shah. Not sure about that red light. Tormentum! Might still be stuck inside if we hadn't been attacked. The corpse had nothing more to say to me. Impero te! We made a mistake. I suppose only time will tell what's happened to him. The girl winked at me as I turned away. The book refused to open. Morio! I looked closely at the hermit crab. At least it won't suffer anymore. The bird chirped his disagreement and resolutely pushed the coin to the right, keeping an eye on me. Obsidian tattoos covered this figure of Shah. Her lips were pursed as if awaiting a kiss. A lot of work for, well, 
whatever this is. No need to insult the dead. Ugh! I him. The goblin planted a wet, sticky kiss on my foot. Footprints. There may be even more that survived the crash. These flowers. They're creating anti-magic fields. The goblin's nostrils flared nervously. All of his bluster had vanished. If only I was mounted on that dragon. The corpse did not stir. It had nothing more to say. I couldn't move. Couldn't think. Thinking was mercifully done for me. Ereske, disera, resisto frigos. He snarled a warning, flattening his ears and lowering his body, ready to pounce. The crab feared me. I had the power to steal it from the beach. Ugh. This tastes like a rote's breath smells. The dog observed me, wary but calm. Maledicte es. The bear grunted her understanding and trudged over to the side. This was all too tiring. Every night that passed was another night the monster inside me grew. I could drown in that song. Vincere est vivere. Akidum. His eyes rolled back as he slumped forward. The well stood as it had for ages. Volo carefully withdrew the needle from my eye. Then reaching into his bag, he produced an ice pick. The tadpole squirmed in my mind. It seemed... Sated. Faccio, voco, fere, amo sanguinem. I spoke in a low, soothing tone and tried to seem small. Her gaze followed it. Clearly, she thought I was trespassing on her territory. Drow. And worse. What were they doing here? Machine made them hostile. Viam sapientiae. We rode forward in silence until the lights of a camp twinkled through the murk. The hag's lair. I think I preferred the swamp. For a terrible moment, my hand twitched. He hasn't noticed us yet. And we have more pressing concerns. Glad that's over. The tracks were a chaotic mess. Gleaning any information from them was impossible. Our minds connected, and I drowned in Lazelle's deep longing. I saw a Githyanki woman, pale as death, her face contorted by desire. Vlakith. The spell's power waned. I could ask no more questions. What do you make of Raphael's offer? Do we dare trust a devil? All memory and all future was lost. There were no parasites to cleanse and no monsters to vanquish. The claws tried to grip my hands, tried to stop me, but I slammed the book shut before they could take me. Expellote! The metal bent and snapped in my almighty grip. I looked up just as the spiders rushed towards me. Schio, didici, pecto. <clears throat> What's done is done but we should think twice before barging in somewhere next time. The tadpole squirmed in my mind. It seemed sated. The corpse awaited my question. The corpse's eyes closed. Its head fell back. It would not answer any more questions. Veritas credo oculos! Might not be the time. Gods! We'll figure it out later. Let's pack it up and move on for now. And if the darkest one was Shah, Moonrise must be her celestial sister, Saluna. Crescit Ayundo! Enough chatter. We retrieve Halsin, we find a cure. <laughs> the truth is, if there is a devil running wild, we might have to deal with it one way or another. Stout heart and hearth fire. Long roads leading back home. Knolls erupting from corpses. I've not seen the likes of it. Every symbol seemed to burn my eyes. I could feel them searing into my mind, into my soul. The bear let out a roar of hurt and hatred. He wasn't done fighting, whether I was on his side or not. The cool night washed over me, but even in the dark, I struggled to find my center. The dog's stance surged aggressively once again upon spotting me. There it was again, anger. I could never defeat it, only suppress it. <laughs> You, and then the mind gripping her thoughts, forcing her actions, was gone. His fingers flexed against his thigh, coiled with tension, longing. I recognized the marks as those of a pack of gnolls. There was no doubt. Listen, there's fighting outside. Macte vertute, impero tibi. It shivered and revealed its own home in reply. A humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. He'd seen another Githyanki. I demanded to know where. If they hadn't heard me before, they certainly did now. The corpse had nothing further to say to me. Easy or not, 
We'll have to figure a way to get Helsin out of here. Invocate! Grek. Hook horrors. Compassion. She resisted, her mind's teeth piercing my brain. Pain shot through me. Owl bear tracks. Its nest must be nearby. The tadpole jolted deep within my brain. This was it. A single word pervaded my consciousness. Soon. Ex textura. Then, as one, they attacked. The deep gnome stared at me, her eyes full of sadness. Seems like it's unanimous. We shouldn't fall prey to this power's temptation. Arcane lights, of course. Challenge the gods. Why not? It wouldn't be the strangest thing that's happened today. Let's leave her in peace. It's the least we can do. Grim looking horizon. Wonder what's out there. Despair poisoned her thoughts. She knew she was doomed, whether she helped me or not. What's done is done. But we should check the corpses for valuables. In certos pulcher imperio! The cruel, beaked face of an owl bear loomed out of the darkness. Mutatis mutandis! That's not going to work. He grunted a pleasant greeting as I approached. <laughs> Ad lapidem! The corpse lay lifeless. It could speak no more. I saw the hag. She walked through the door, its form shimmering. Corellan, preserve me. That cannot be our fate. We're not letting this parasite get the better of us. No more relying on its power. This absolute seems serious. We need to learn more. See how it's all connected. Aqua pura. <coughs> Manus potentis paro. That old woman was certainly memorable. In nocte concilium. Punge bene curator. Those boots look quite special. Something for Gale, maybe. Mors carta. The corpse remained still and silent. With a shudder, the pig barked. I've never seen this language before. Who was worshipped here? Klausus. Its host would feast on knoll flesh to control the hunger, to keep her teeth from my throat. Intactilusum. Cupio virtus licet. Through music and vision, the sovereign revealed the truth of the fungal creature before me. The presence within sobbed. The hag was gone. He was trapped in this door, this wooden prison, forever. And then smiled serenely, as blood and shadow spread like stains across my memory, erasing all that lived there. Unleash. Saluna bathed in red. A fine image, but not one her worshippers would create. Resisto venenum. But then it shrank back down and started to slither away. A cluster of spiders scuttled inside the crevice. The corpse raised its head, staring at me. Non compos mentis, ale me. Perhaps using Ethel's wand wasn't the best idea. Glacius! I felt my blood boil. There was no fighting this torrent of emotion. Everything Ethel touches is corrupt. We should have known better. Bene curator, voco vineai. The voice was closer now. It was so clear, so peaceful. There's no point in arguing. The spell was already cast. Watch your step. These webs are everywhere. Fiat Lux! Ah! She regarded me placidly for a moment, then intently. I looked like her master. Corpses. These creatures did battle with Dwergar. A violent vision gripped me. Dwergar like myself. Chopping myconid remains. The squirrel bit my foot again. My hand touched the capsule and something in my brain twisted. From the far distance I heard a blast of goblin voices. Interlocking circles with moons and stars. This must be the seal mentioned in that journal. Mortalis! Everyone agrees there's no need for the poison? Let's get rid of it. Let us step soft and sure as hunting hamsters. A string snapped with a twang, whipping across my face, and I noted its delicate filaments. It had been merely a child. <sighs> Where's Will? Signum arcanum, Kitius. Better be careful. Those webs carry vibrations. My skull briefly ached, and I was her. I felt her irritation and indignity. I realized the tiefling's body had been torn open by huge hands. Best to move before the blood draws more of them. He growled, warning me to keep my distance. He was suspicious, confused by the question that fell from his lips. I proceeded carefully. My voice cut through the fog of confusion. I felt the creature's hold on them wavering. The goblin's nostrils flared, as if trying to judge me through smell alone. This was a bad call, and no chance Ethel will give us a refund. Ragslin pierced my mind, prodding for truth. Blasted sunlight. Why did the mushrooms lead us here? Ha! I wonder why this one isn't working. Et alibi! 
I live by two rules. Always empty your flask and never trust goblins. The lock on the chains opened. So those mushrooms can raise the dead. That's... interesting. New Moon shouldn't be on top. Not in a temple of Saluna. Another illusion. Is anything real down here? Useless. Our minds intertwined. I saw his siblings, Andrik and Brynna. New recruits. Mine to shepherd. Mundus Voltikipi. I was perfectly happy. The brothers. I guess they didn't find their sister. Cupio Virtus Lycet. Caveat Incantator. As I turned to leave, so did the other child nearby. She looked nervous for some reason. This grove is kept by Eldath's faithful prophets. Just second-rate poets with delusions of grandeur. There was something dark about this tome. I could sense it. Something profane. Curiosity conquered his suspicions. I sucked in a breath of relief. <laughs> Mirror mushrooms. Step on the wrong one and plummet to your death. The fright choir faded. A single melody rose above the others, brassy and commanding. The necromancy of Thay. Sounds ominous. I wonder how long this agreement will last. That drow cowl might have bits of magic lingering inside it. Something for Gale. Facing that lot would be suicide. At least for now. I probed the corpse for residual memories, but there were none. I awoke in pain. My back, my hands, even my tongue ached. Dwergar corpses. What is this beast doing to them? It won't be hard to keep their scent. That foul blood is everywhere. I blinked, and the wilderness changed. A swamp, stinking and insidious, assaulted my senses. Configo! The persistent music coaxed me forward. The sovereign expected me, carrying an ornate chest. If it was lost, so was she. A sweet melody played above the waves. It vibrated with magic, beckoning me. A charm, I realised. The crab relaxed as I stepped back. I took my leave, carefully. A cave. Best day sharp. I've been out of the dark for a while. Gods above. What happened? Cupio virtus lycet. He began to move his hand in a quick flurry of gestures. What just happened? My heart seized. Under questioning, the creature might recognise me as its killer. The world around me was gone. I could only see those glyphs, only hear those voices. Either way, these corpses prove one thing. This is the city Halson mentioned. The bear whimpered softly, looking at me with something akin to hope. <laughs> Answers eluded me. Growling, the squirrel bit my foot again. Knolls, vicious, monstrous humanoids, could spawn from the corpses of dying hyenas. Nocturnus, plue. I'm trying not to think about it. Ereske. Ethel gritted her teeth struggling to speak, but the spell held. She couldn't answer any more questions. The talons came too quickly and dug deep. The owlbear reared back for another strike. I struggled to cling to scraps of what I knew. Powerful necromancy, I was certain, but it darted away, leaving only hell's screams. The corpse collapsed, silent once more. I didn't recognize the ritual or the name, Mother Peace. Secreti umbrarum. Fulgor! That bastard broke his nose. What is this place? A calm night was a mercy. Why couldn't I sleep? Umbrai. Let's not jump to conclusions. We calmed down some crazy fishermen, that's all. The spiders scattered, but my hand came up empty. Had the bag been a trick of the light? No more prayers. Only dust and silence. Vita excolator. Voco araniae. The drum lay before me. Lux in tenebra. Shadow druids. There's more to Korga than meets the eye. Intelligenti pauca. They make good bait, drawing attention away from us. Resisto! I bet this idol's powerful enough for Gale to get something out of it. The wolf was calm. The battle had satisfied his urge to hunt. The dead goblin would speak no more. I pushed back, taking advantage of a tremor of pain cutting through the creature. Forget the king and his plans. A healer comes first. I told him to hand over that pack for my trouble. He's trying to escape again. Amo sanguinem. I saw it. The faintest hint of a smirk on his face. He was hiding something. Vokovinei! Stay ready. Something isn't right. Deep grooves in the mud around that rock. The ox flicked its gaze away. It knew I carried a parasite and wanted none of it. By the hells, what is that? Rocks and rubble. There's got to be a way past. That tree. Its spirit is oddly 
silent, Tim asked. The spores confused the senses. The owlbear glowered and pivoted, trying to keep me out of its blind spot. Get confused by one, blown up by the other. I found the edges of a concealed entrance. There's a darkness coursing through those vines. Intactilusum! It breathed deep, unfurling my past in a vibrant chain. Not a drow to it, but rather... Aqua pura! The bear radiated palpable calm, not just calm, pure serenity. Gods, they're out of their minds. I don't think we're going to agree on this today. Let's move on. That wall's an illusion. Hiding what, I wonder? Strange. It looks healthy, but it's stone dead. Inkende! At least we know these parasites can be removed. Now to find a non-fatal way. The dead goblin would speak no more. I took my leave. The cub continued to gorge himself on his dead mother. The ox leaned forward eagerly, snuffling the air around me. I considered my options. She was looking for the grove, and the prisoner could lead her straight to it. Could mean anything. The Ebon Lake. I wouldn't go sticking your hand in. I wonder what they say. The spiders scattered and I stashed the bag. Something clinked among the coins. Cinemetu. The bear glanced in the direction of the woods, then growled, frightened. Too many predators lately, even for them. I should have been whipped, made to bow before this creature in shame. Magis amica veritas. Places overrun with knolls. I watched her flick through the book, her face tensing as she went. Ah, oh, just empty shells. Best to just keep the unhatched one. Virtus et scientia. The blank look. The flat voice. He was holding something back. Baldur's Gate. That's where I'm from. Then, visions. Dwergar like myself, chopping fungal tendrils with their axes. A petrification ray. Someone addled that spectator. Video veritatem. It was a bad idea from the start. Everyone's messing with our heads these days. The bird chirped, happy for the advice, and did as I asked. Iretio inspira. The bird took flight chirping loudly in protest and fear. The tadpole writhed. My mind suddenly reeled as if bitten. Evanesco. <laughs> the sheep's eyes bulged with alarm. It hurried away from me. I wonder who or what those chains are for. Corruptus in venium viam. A thing like that could swallow each of us whole. Raw or incinerated. We're a little outnumbered here, aren't we? We're in agreement. Let's be careful about what magic we use. Ostende secretorum tuorum. Strudge! I... may vomit. The kithrak nodded, content with Lazel's answer. Impero mortus! The tadpole. It was doing... something. Taking something I'd never get back. The bird hopped around his nest, keeping his eye on me. I wouldn't take his coin. <coughs> The corpse grimaced and turned away. I was its killer. It would not speak to me. Sorge! Let's try a little trust, eh? People might just surprise you. I can't believe I'm in one piece. Hells. Something just woke up down here. Oh, that's better. Tell me you hear that voice. Perry! I've heard of this Baldur's Gate. A walled congregation of inferiors. This could spell trouble. By my eye, that blade's magical. What do you think, Gail? The corpse jerked violently. It had no desire to answer to its killer. I'm a bit busy at the moment. We'll talk later. More! They victis! Bloody way to end an argument. I hope we chose the right side. As the trance stabilised, I breathed deep. Be it cure or cage, something had to be done about the tadpole. The boar fled with a desperate squeal. Amo sanguinem! The book slammed shut but the glyphs remained. When I closed my eyes, I saw them, still glowing in the darkness. Then she lunged at my foot and bit it. Looks like that's going to bruise. Must be what that kid was talking about. Auntie Ethel's face creased with false concern. I realised she had lied about seeing this girl, Marina. Venustior. Tormentum. Agilius. These tracks. Goblins. I saw the tadpole in the Mind Flayer's hand. Not a parasite. Perfection. Not without its mother by its side. What now? His mind remained closed to me. Flagra! Strange collar. It's got runes all over it. Ragslin's mind reeled, then calmed. He would speak as I commanded. Finely aged wine. Don't mind if I do. Nulla salus. History. 
The human's a bigot, and he should have got the beating he deserved. I said it seemed he'd been at the mercy of thugs for too long. I recalled a wild wood touched only by the Telquesir. The world around me breathed and blossomed. The corpse seemed willing to speak, but not to me. Kaido! It beckoned me with a nod of its head, and then it was off. The corpse's mouth jerked as the magic took hold, a dead tongue waiting to speak. The corpse wrenched violently. The magic had worked but it was unwilling to speak to me. The spiders hissed and attacked. Then we are in agreement. Make haste. A hag's staff has to be brimming with magic. Take a look, Gail. Looking around, her territory extended from one end of the grove to another. The door shuddered as it imagined its wooden frame cracking and splintering in a raging inferno. Gake prison. What in the hells was that? Venus Dior. The bark is in place. Now what? I saw one of Ragslin's memories. Sitting on his throne, he hoisted a scepter into the air and declared himself the Absolute's right hand. The crab sat serenely in its new muddy home. <gasps> the sovereign's song halted as it measured my worth. Ignis! My nostrils filled with the rank smell of death. The hyena had feasted, but looking into her eyes, I knew it wasn't enough. She was still hungry. My heart seized. What if the creature noted my presence at the crash site? Cum mortua sin lingua mortua. Alas. All I saw was empty space. The mirror reflected nothing. I saw her brother as a child, crying over a dead bird. The slingshot in Arca's hand. I felt her guilt. <coughs> I had to gather my party before setting out on the water. The child reached into the rocks behind him and opened a well-concealed hatch. Nulla salus, voco flagella! The tiefling's corpse stirred with the spell. A chill ran up my spine. I felt I was being watched. Frange. The man was now dead, but then I noticed a squirming movement under his features. I saw a vision, my lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign was threatening me. A key? For what? I steadied my hand and began to play once more. My heart lightened as I finished the song. I hoped that the dead rested a little easier. What in the nine hills is that? Manos potentis paro. The flames sputtered away. The sword was complete. To no avail. I couldn't bring myself to hurt the creature. Is this just for decoration? Useless. The adventurer slept soundly, his breath steady, his wounds expertly bandaged. Ragslin's mind raged. I had asked what no true soul would dare. I've never seen a tree like that. The bark must be a rarity. There was a pause as those glass eyes took me in. Then the spell's power waned. I could ask no more questions. My skull briefly ached, and I was her. I felt her anger at the Kithrak she'd confronted. The corpse remained still, and I felt answers. She knew more about my condition. Confucio! My kin wield their spears formidably. It would be foolish to provoke battle with them now. Excellent armor. Drowcraft, of course. With one last rattling gasp, the body lay still. The magic was gone. I don't regret it. I hope someone would do the same for me. Will's anger turned to anguish, and his mind pulled away. There was another muffled cry. The two inside were still in the throes of passion. Fool. Little surprise he perished. Seco! The old woman bustled about, muttering to herself. I felt my blood boil. There was no fighting this torrent of emotion. Nice to know we have another tool in our pack. This power is bound to come in handy. But then the feeling slipped. The creature's mind seemed to focus elsewhere. <laughs> I felt her probing my mind, and our thoughts became entangled. A familiar sensation. She too carried a parasite. It was possessing my mind, forcing me to love it. Oculus Tempestatis! Ragslin scowled, shocked by a question I shouldn't have asked, and a jolt shot through me. We should find him. Maybe he can help. No, we were fooled. This was a raw deal, through and through. The corpse did not stir. It had said all that it could. I realised he was casting detect thoughts. Something was off. These statues looked too benevolent to be depictions of Shah. Dolor. Maka Kamara. That's a hook horror. Tiefling faces flickered into view as she attempted to learn the grove's location. At the mention of Halsin's name, she flapped excitedly. And suddenly the great bear seemed lost, lonely. Silently, she settled back down to watch me. I saw other mind flayers arranged in a serene circle. Absolute unity. Absolute power. I quickly assessed my options. 
Many lives hung in the balance. She prized my mental barriers apart and saw the mind flare I'd encountered. Flagra! Yuck, smells like rotten eggs. An unlikely place for such a fortunate find. A longing for small spaces, stone walls hugging close, confining, comforting. I remembered reading a history of Thay. Zas Tam was a powerful lich who ruled that land, driving out the red wizards who opposed him. The monster lay exhausted, defeated. Its eyes, wet black pearls, radiated only malice. The needle found the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowned and began to push. I saw a frothing Dwergar, axe drawn, crazed by bloodlust, bearing down on a young Myconid. Volo carefully held one of my eyes open and began to prod uncertainly with the needle. The spell's power waned. The corpse fell still. My muscles burned with the effort, but the chains held strong. Hmm. Next time's the charm? Our minds intertwined. I saw his siblings, Andrik and Brynna. New recruits, mine to Shepherd. West, Baldur's Gate. East, Elturel. Ragslin continued the interrogation, oblivious to my attempt to sway him. Another vision. I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod. I told her I wasn't leaving without that insult to craftsmanship. The book refused to open, at least for me. I tried to close the book, but claws tore at me from the darkness. I could feel them on my hands, in my eyes, in my soul. The sign of Shah above the others. As it should be. I saw an image. Curved drow blades, crude goblin torches, knoll teeth, dripping blood. The crab tasted cold and briny, squirming even after I bit down. It didn't stop moving until I swallowed. Gods, what's happening? Gaik. Death is too kind a fate. The squirrel let out a terrified squeak and bolted. Maledicte es! The corpse fell silent. It had nothing more to say. All memory and all future was lost. There were no parasites to cleanse and no monsters to vanquish. I won't push you. Shaw's faithful aren't exactly known for their honesty. Butchered. They didn't stand a chance. The squirrel flicked her tail at me and turned away. Well, that was... interesting. By Eldath, mother of the waters, all strife is cleansed. The sky split open and nautiloids poured out of a void that consumed the stars. The boar huffed and bellowed, beady eyes full of distrust. The spell's power waned and the corpse fell still. Voskioro! This plain is full of disturbing creatures. True. You wouldn't have the grit. I saw her cradling a smaller child as he wept, her eyes hard and hot her knuckles bloodless. Viam sapientiae, vos curo. The dog continued to mourn at his master's side. What was that thing inside her? Can't read this script. This place reeks of death. Oh, that reeks. The bear gently raised a paw, pointing into the distance. He was far from home. Ha <laughs> ha, seco. The poison burned my throat but the goblins followed my lead. The poison burned my throat, but the goblin relaxed. I scooped up his gold pouch while the halfling stumbled deeper into the water, oblivious. Schio didici pecto. It's broken, but not too badly. It uttered a bone-shaking screech of fury. Vicious spider-like creatures appeared. <sighs> Fools. Little surprise they perished. My vision swam, but I had to fight through the pain. My assailants were still under the creature's thrall. The crab visibly recoiled from the warm mammalian smell inside the pack. The magic waned. I could ask no more questions. As I slipped free, coming back to myself, I heard the seductive hum of my own blood. The knoll would drink it. Pretty, but it doesn't do much. Fungal roots wove through my mind, poking me, warning me. My collarbone dislocated, allowing me to slip free of the chains. Maior! Fortior! Perhaps they returned to the astral plane? Saluna's sigil in the dark. Who would have done this? A bag lay within the crevice. At its mouth, a gold coin glinted. From the underdark to the swamp. Lovely. I put a lot of trust in you, Shadowheart. Try not to break it. The owlbear shrieked, its outrage undiminished. Watch your step. The corpse refused to speak to its killer. I saw a clawed hand open a holding pod to reveal... darkness. I said yes. Reward, please. The box like iron. This is a waste of time. Ferio! The cub looked from me to his dead mother and let out a plaintive cry. An illusion came over me. A dwergar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Teed stringo linguam! 
I raised my glass and shouted. The owlbear lashed out, struggling to keep me in its limited field of view. Torre! The corpse did not stir. It had answered too many questions already. Tormentum. I hope we did the right thing, trusting a creature like that. The realization hit me. That stench wasn't the dead. I could sense that the hyena's very flesh was desecrated. She was, though. I could see it in her eyes, deep down. The spell's power waned, and the corpse fell silent. I saw a frothing dwergar, axe drawn, crazed by bloodlust, bearing down on a young myconid. The crab reveled in its new home of mud, claws clicking with joy. Strange. Why make a path from the Underdark to here? With a jerk, I was pulled from the vision. I felt the presence within shrink, terrified. Annihilate. Diminue. Necklace has a harper sigil. Why were they here? It's been a long day. I'll need to rest soon. His fangs snapped and gnashed, biting down on nothing. He wanted more. I don't have the fists to take on as a hinterim base. We're stretched thin as it is. The sheep stared blankly. Veniet Juvene! The meat here was forbidden. She sniffed the air, then bounded away to terrorize someone else. Is that Volo? I swallowed the cold, briny meat whole. Whether the crab died from my mouth or simple shock was unclear. There's no getting through. Hyenas birthing gnolls. How horrid. Once more, he brought the needle to my eye. Te absolvo! The dog turned to the dead man before bowing his head with a soft whine. Drooling. They stared at my hands held out in friendship. No, there's more. You're not telling me the whole truth, are you? Wherever this is, at least it's free of dragons. The creature's song rumbled within me, neither warm nor welcoming. A dirty ring landed at my feet as the crab carved out a place to rest. Curiosity conquered the hobgoblin's suspicions. I sucked in a breath of relief. After them! It hadn't, unfortunately, occurred to me that Lolf might be listening. In excessus. Their jaws flexed. Their gaze flicked between me and the door. Uh, Ira! The goblin stared, mouth agape. Then he set his jaw and fell to his knees. Knolls ahead. Surprised they haven't already pounced. They rarely pass on a fresh meal. Every cut was meditation. It reshaped the world to Vlakith's will. Not much use anymore. A vampire. Well, at least we know where we stand. Gustas Dolkis. I wonder what was so subversive about their words that they commanded protection. The goblin stared at me, twitching. He seemed unsure whether to bow or attack. Lapis root? Suffer? Rare to see these so far north. The bugbear lay dead on the ground, lifeless once more. It was time to decide what to do. The Rothe turned to me defensively, her lights flickering, and I felt a familiar lurch. The tadpole. Invocate! Our parasites connected. Will's doubts gripped me, then relaxed. The presence within cowered, terrified of me. The myconid greeted me with pure sensation. Sadness and joy intermingled. <sighs> Ragslin's mind was clouded by doubt, surprised by words he didn't expect. Morio. That chest. I can feel its magic. His presence still lingered in my mind caressing it softly. Looking at the broken helmet, I recognized the mark of Shah. This army marched in her name. Caveat incantator! 